Spinning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory. Did you know what Indy means? <laughs> and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the fans are back. The weather is fine, and we are ready for a restart of the Indianapolis 500-mile race, the 81st running. The cars are set. The command is now about to be given Ladies over the start-finish line. The chairman of the board of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Mrs. Marie Holman george Lady and gentlemen, restart your engines. And with the call to restart your engines. And once again, it's a roar that builds up on the straightaway at Indianapolis. They're lined up single file in the pit area, and everyone is set to go. After the uh, long wait yesterday, the long wait the day before, everyone's hoping that this third time is the charm. Now, they'll be rolling out on lap 15. When they come around, they'll be under yellow, but it will be lap 16. Yesterday, it was an aborted start because of an accident up in turn four. Now, Tom Sneva, we're going to take a look at that situation once again and try and determine exactly what happened. Well, drivers need to focus on a lot of things, and one of them is the cars in their own row. Here we've got uh, the two inside guys, Gregoire on the inside, Giafoni in the middle. Gregoire on the upper left, uh, Giafoni touch, touch, his left front touches Gregoire, turns him sideways, shoots him into the outside wall. Kenny Brick is out there, fat, dumb, and happy, and gets driven straight into. All three of them are out. Now, the cars have already started to roll out. Kenny Breck was much aligned yesterday. Didn't appear to be part of that situation. Now, we're ready to go again, Tom. Well, we are. You know, with all new cars and equipment, uh, there's been big question marks. What combination of tires, engines, and chassis was going to be the one to have? So far this month, the combination to have has been uh, web feet, uh, ducks, and... Uh, maybe some swim fins. All right, as the cars continue to roll out at Indianapolis, we're gonna send you over to the turn four area. That's where Danny Sullivan is, and Danny, are they up for the third day? These drivers' emotions have gone up and down with all of the rain delays over the last couple of days. But now that they're finally back in their cars and ready for this restart, the adrenaline is pumping and their focus is sharp as it was on Sunday. And there are the cars over on the back stretch. They've just come past Bobby Unser. Bobby is up on top of turn two. And Bobby, with this new day, what's the game plan? Just think, for the last 30 days, the team owners, the mechanics, the drivers, the engineers, sometimes special hired people, have to come in and done game planning on how the race is going to run, how they're going to do everything from pit stops to what ifs, so all the other drivers and owners now, that's all gone. The race is going to be restarted. Nobody really probably has much of a game plan now. Things have differed. But all in all, you watch and see. It'll still be a good race today because we'll have sunshine in it. All right, here is the way they will line up on the restart. Tony Stewart in the first position, followed by Ari Leyendijk. Those two, by the way, of the active drivers here in this race are tied for the most laps, running the lead at 59 each. Robbie Buell will be third. Robbie Gordon is fourth. He moved from 12th to fourth. Vincenzo Susperi and then Scott Goodyear, seventh will be Jeff Ward, 8th, Davey Hamilton, 9th, Eliseo Salazar, 10th is Buddy Lazier, the defending champion, 11th, Buzz Calkins, who moved from 16th to 11th, and then Steve Kinzer, who jumped up from 20th to 12th, and Billy Rowe, who followed Kinzer up 24th to 13th. Mark Dismore also made a great move, passing 11 cars on the first two laps. And then Roberto Guerrero with the highest running car, equipped with an Infinity engine. Then Billy Boat, Greg Ray, 
Dr. Jack Miller. Tice Carlson, the short track specialist, moved up seven starts from his starting position. Fermin Velez, Paul Durant, he's passed 12 cars. Marco Greco, who pitted on the parade lap, but is now running strong. Mike Groff dropped from 18th to 23rd. Dennis Patolo. Johnny Unzer, who moved up 10 positions. Lynn St. James. Eddie Cheever, who pitted on 11 laps and dropped from 16th to 27th. Then Robbie Groff, who is one lap off of the pace. And Jim Guthrie, with his engine problems of yesterday, is seven laps off the pace. Let's go to Jack Arute. Well, Paul, let's tell you exactly what the teams are going to be doing or what they were allowed to do last night. When the cars went back to Gasoline Alley, USAC officials let the teams make any repairs or changes that normally they could do on pit road. What does that mean? The tub had to stay intact, the engine block had to stay intact, and the transmission area had to stay intact. But internally, you could make changes. Side pods could be looked into, radiators exchanged, ECMs, wiring harnesses. All of that, Jerry Punch, was up for grabs. As many as five drivers uh, were able to get somewhat of a benefit from the aborted start and subsequent red flag from rain. Both the brothers, Rob, Robbie, and Mike, had electronics problems that have since been rectified. Dennis Botolo had a throttle linkage broke. That has been fixed. And, of course, a $3 detent spring, this little spring right here which holds the car in fifth gear, was what caused the Eddie Cheever car to make an unscheduled pit stop. He restarts today in 27th spot. And, of course, Jim Guthrie's car overheated. He started in row two for two reasons. They had a baffle blocking air from getting into radiator and they had a 25 cent radiator clamp that was pinched shut causing water to leak and not be able to get into the engine block and this morning for Guthrie to make matters worse they had a water pump fail they ran up here to the Robbie Gordon crew and borrowed a water pump what they just finished putting on the car to get the car rolled in line to start let's go to Gary Terrell one other change all of these teams were able to top off with fuel they have 35 gallons of methanol on board an implication of the delay several of the teams have had to do some juggling of personnel because work commitments called them away from indianapolis a handful of teams have had to change but for the most part everybody that goes over the wall will be the a team for each and every one of these drivers the 29 that are still in the running as we continue and look ahead to green on the back stretch, they should be coming to the green flag. Here's the breakdown, chassis, engines, and tires. And what about the stories that we face in today's race? Well, the first of those was rookies. There were 13 started, four are out, two in a crash. And attrition, unproven engines. Three engines have already blown. And then there's the weather. It's cool, it's clear, it's right now, but it certainly will affect the strategy. So now, as they move across the north end and head into turn four, the pace car has already pulled well away. Johnny Rutherford at the steering wheel, the three-time champion. And Tony Stewart will be leading Ari Leyendijk. Ari Leyendijk is right up behind him. It's a surprising number of people that have returned to Indianapolis for this, the third day of racing. Now let's watch. Remember, guys, they've got everything's cold. Tony Stewart brings him down. Everybody bunches up behind him. Are they going to go green? They do. And the race is back on at Indianapolis. Tony Stewart gets a great jump on the field. Robbie Gordon drops in behind Ari Leyendijk, getting around Robbie Buell as they go into turn one. Off of the corner, everyone safe through there, gets tight. Back behind the leader where Sospiri is running. The rookie that started on the front row, side by side, they come off of that corner. And here comes Robbie Gordon in that blue and gray car. He makes a move on the pole sitter, Ari Leyendijk, and dives low into the pit area, Tom Steva. Well, we heard on the radio that he had some water up his back and... Uh, uh, a puff of smoke at the back of the engine. Also, Lazier was there. The smoke coming out. Robbie is really mad, but Lazier was really moving when he went by. Oh, here, and apparently the engine blew and got hot water down into the cockpit. So Robbie has been burning. He may even have fire. Well, that, that's why he's rolling on the ground. You can't see the flame, and he feels hot. Look at his right leg there. He's had something that looks like it burned his, his right leg there. Look as he rolls oh, over. Without question, the discoloration in his uniform. Robbie Gordon has been burned as something happened in the cockpit. He very wisely jumped out of the car and rolled to get the flames out. The car itself is a fire. The yellow flag is out on the restart at Indianapolis. Let's hope that Robbie is not hurt too badly. Remember, they wear uh, several layers 
of fire protection, but if it is fuel and or hot water, which is what I suspect that may be a combination of, it still is going to burn. Well, what happens is when, when a driver feels heat, you try to prepare yourself for these situations and how to react, but uh, you just can't. Now, look at Robbie. He was saying, hold on a minute. Maybe we can get it going, yeah, you think? He, a couple of minutes ago, he's rolling on the ground. He thinks he's out of it. Now he's ready to go back and try to go racing. But he was just, a minute, he got that uh, fire out on himself. He's there. He wants to get back in that car and get out on the race. Yeah, he was he's only a worried. Racer here. He was only worried about himself in the beginning. Now he's worried about the car. Get back in. Yeah, Robbie's saying, "Get me to the pits," and the crews are saying, "I'm not so sure we can do that." The crowd is saying, "Let him go." I'm with him. He ought to let him go. But the safety crews are telling him to get out of the car. I think it's too bad. Well, Robbie's ready to go, but obviously there was something serious that caused that uh, heat to develop in that cockpit. Well, Jerry Punch, you're in his pit. Well, Felix Sabatis is watching on the monitor what we are seeing with Robbie Gordon climbing out of the car. Felix, had Robbie said anything to you about what happened? No, he just pulled off the track, and I saw him jump out of the car and start rolling down the grass. So apparently his uniform was on fire. So that's all we know. I mean, we couldn't tell any more than you could. The crew started to head back to the garage, and you saw him get back in the car. They ran back to pit wall, maybe hoping he could bring the car back. Well, I don't know if the uh, official won't let him get back in the car. He got back in the car to make him get out again. So I don't know what it is. Something went wrong with the car, but we don't know what it was. All right, we're still waiting for information here in the Robbie Gordon pit. Well, remember that Robbie Gordon's motor blew in carburation runs last Thursday and it resulted in a very similar action of burning on the race car. There's the order. We'll be back with more from Indy. Back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, caution being shown to the field. Robbie Gordon's car with the cockpit charred has been pulled back around the pit road and Gordon climbed out of the car immediately pointing to his, his driver's uniform and to, to the crew as to the fact that he does have some, some areas. Let's, let's see if we can grab Robbie right quick and see uh, He's okay. Robbie? Are you okay, Robbie? That had to be a little bit scary. Um, I don't know what happened. I, I got coming out of turn two. I went by land. I just car caught on fire. Uh, it was burning all the way down the back straightaway. You've got some burns on your hand. Uh, we saw some charred marks on your uniform. Did it, did it get you down on the legs or thigh? I think it got me in the leg a little bit. Um, we'd like to get back out. We're going to check it out and see what caught on fire. Okay, Robbie Gordon here trying to be able to find out what happened. He got out of the car and uh, talked to Ken Anderson and said it just had fire all over me, Ken. We don't know why. So Robbie Gordon's going to try to get back in. Tom Steven, let's take a look at the start. Well, right here, Paul, Paul, you see that they're in single file. They're in a pretty good straight line for the start of that race. But as they come down the front straightaway, you see that these guys are ready to go racing. They get up here a quarter of the way to the green flag, and right in this area, uh, we've got a three abreast start that's supposed to be single file. Yesterday, these guys, many of them felt like uh, they maybe started this race a little too conservative. Now they have the feeling that they can get away with a little bit more. These boys are ready to go race. And Buddy Lazier fans may have noticed that he moved from 10th up to 5th place on that start and became part of that group that was battling as they crossed the line. But, Tom, the rule is, on a restart, green to the front car is green to the field. Yeah, as soon as the flag comes out, uh, they can't be passing people, but they must see the green flag before they're completely up, you know, beyond or past somebody that's in front of them. Well, as they come to the line, Stewart continues his lead, followed by Lion Dyke, Robbie Buell, Jeff Ward, is now fourth. Whoa, whoa, oh, no, we got no. a crash. Again, they were two or three abreast before the green flag, I think, even came out. Well, Tom, what I saw down here in turn four is the, the lead cars came off the turn and slowed down. The guys in the back had a gap between them. They all started to accelerate, and they accelerated up, and everybody was stopped in front of them. They had to run into them and jam on the brakes. Yeah, we've got Steve Kinzer here with the right front wing that uh, has got some serious damage. Also, it looked like Roberto Guerrero had damage on the front of his car. His wing right front again damaged as well. He comes on the pit road. And uh, so all of a sudden, we've got another crash here. Mark Dismore limps back in. Unbelievable. 
We'll look at it again. Tom, what do you see? This is from Steve Kinzer's view. Well, you know, right here, Steve just trying to get the gear in the right gear so he can accelerate. Uh, he's, look at it, he's starting to charge, but obviously the guys in front of him slow right down. He punts uh, poor Salazar and... Uh, you know what's amazing, Tom, is he didn't even put his brakes on there. Well, I don't, they don't have brake lights, Bobby, so I don't, I'm not sure we know he didn't put his brakes no, on. No, no, I'm talking about Steve Kinzer did not. His front tires didn't lock up, we could see from the camera. Well, it was a big surprise for everybody. The front of the field uh, started to go, and then... But, but look how slow that front pack is, about the first eight cars, and that back pack is really moving forward, and they had nowhere to go. And, Danny, that's exactly what the problem is. Tony Stewart has been on the radio to Larry Curry and John Menard about Ari Leyendijk, and the feud continues that started yesterday. Stewart is not at all happy about the fact that Leyendijk is crowding him on the start. Let's go back to the feud that started yesterday. The problem was, according to Stewart, on the start, Ari Leyendijk on the inside of the front row tried or attempted to fade Stewart out towards the wall on the starting of the, of the starting lap. There is not good blood between these two teams right now, and Stewart has been back and forth on the radio once again. Larry Curry, in fact, has gone to the USAC officials and registered a complaint. Well, pits are closed. What happened was Salazar got hit from behind. There he is. He was hit from behind by Kinzer, and that started a chain reaction that involved Roberto Guerrero and Mark Dismore on the front stretch. Here's Dismore coming back. We'll look at it from a different view. You can see the yellow in uh, the corner here. The green hasn't even come out before we actually have an accident on the front straightaway. So that was before they were able to go green. Again, it looks like Kinzer just runs into the back of Salazar, spinning him to the outside wall. We're actually uh, pretty lucky we didn't have more cars involved at this point. Now the question now will be how severe is the damage? to those cars will they be able to change it all of these crews were prepared to handle almost anything at indianapolis the 81st running of the indianapolis 500 on abc's wide world of sports brought to you by valvoline duroblend the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil oldsmobile and your authorized aurora retailers goodyear number one in tires and priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Back at Indianapolis, 26 laps into the record book over two days. We continue to be yellow. The pits were reopened, but of course, if you have damage, as several cars did, you can go into the pits. Now, let's take another look at the start. Jack Aroot was talking about it from yesterday. It, it started a few, Tom Steva, that appears to be renewed today. Well, yeah, right here you see Lion Dyke and Stewart together. Now, this is a lot like a basketball game. You're, we're not sure if uh, we've got uh, the first foul or the second foul is what the officials are going to try to catch. Now, right now, Lion Dyke is pretty well where he needs to, to be on the racetrack. It looks like Stewart might be pinching him a little bit, but we hear Stewart's complaining about Lion Dyke. Now, Stewart, or Lion Dyke comes over a little bit to the outside of the racetrack. Here's today. That's yesterday, of course. Now, we'll look at what they were doing today. This is out of Stewart's car. Well, here, Lion Dyke's just moving over a little bit. He's not uh, doing anything here that should upset anybody. He just wants to have a clear track in front of him in case, in case he's able to get a, a better run on the start than, uh, than Stewart is. Tom, I agree with you. He did nothing wrong there. That was perfect. He was trying to take advantage in case Stewart made a bad start. He's going to try to jump him into turn one and get that lead. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with Danny, too. Well, today, hovering over the track here is... Uh, the Goodyear Blimp Spirit. Blimp based over at Akron, Ohio, and will help us with the coverage here today. So we are under yellow 27 laps into the record book, and they're doing work in the pits. Jerry Punch? 
Steve Kinsler's been on pit road twice. The first time they came in and replaced the entire front wing section. This monocoque here, they took off and put six speed screws in to put a brand new wing on. You see what it's made of? Simply carbon fiber and Kevlar. That's where the contact was with LSAO Salazar. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Jerry, there was some question as to whether Robbie Buell would be coming onto pit road because he ran over some debris. The plus is Buell has onboard telemetry for the pressure on the tires. They check the telemetry, they're going to leave him out. Gary? Tough luck for Mark Dismore, caught up in that collection with the Kinzer incident, and now they push the car closer to the wall. Rear wing has been removed. Paul Atlovich, Chuck Buckman tell us there appears to be a failure at the gearbox. They say it probably will not last for 500 miles. This race may now be over for Mark Dismore. Well, of course, uh, depending on how the weather, which could change here today, they may be thinking of running a shorter race. That thinking going on in the cruise. After 26 laps, here is the running order. And uh, the most substantial movement appears to have been made by Buddy Lazier, who jumped up into fifth position. Well, the yellows are plaguing the Indianapolis 500 at this moment. They should be able to go back to green flag racing in one more lap after they come across the line. And now they're going to be able to do it on this lap. Already the pace car has accelerated into the pit area. Tony Stewart leads them back toward the start finish line and the green flag. And Stewart weaves it back a little bit. Again, they bunch up, looking for the green to come out. Well, they're not learning very fast here. Look at this restart. There are three, four breaths coming down the the inside Robbie Buell drops into third side by side for the first turn Tony Stewart hangs on they're across the south shoot Bobby that was really a good pass by Stewart and Lion Dyke Tony Stewart is bringing him down too slow for the start on board Buddy Lazier who has been moving up through the field he comes up behind Lion Dyke that's Buell over to the inside Stewart ahead Steve Kinzer comes to turn two, passing guys on the outside. We're starting to see some good racing now. At the front of the field, the fight continues and comes to Danny. Uh, over here, Buddy Lazier trying to go around the outside of two other cars, and I think he's going to make it. He's making a great move on the outside. Jeff Ward holds him off. You're on board, Buddy. That's Jeff Ward over to the left. Buddy Lazier continues to work through the field, the defending champion. Now slides into third place, Lion Dyke just ahead of him. Now, over here in turn two, we have Tony Sturz way ahead, and then Buell, and then Lion Dyke who came out behind that. Buddy Lazier is the one that's on the move right now, though. Boy, Jeff Ward is right behind Buddy Lazier now. That fight continues. Tony Stewart able to pull away just a little bit. Buell into second place. Lion Dyke is third. You know, yesterday, Paul, everybody was lazy through here, especially the guys in the back. Today, they're all racing hard. All right, there's the banner up at the top of the field. It'll give you the lap rundown of the 200, who the leader is, and the relationship of everyone back behind the leader. Buddy Lazier on the move. Jeff Ward with a tremendous start here. A rookie at Indianapolis, former motocross champion, holding his own and giving that car a great ride for his owner, Eddie Cheever. Cheever sits much further back in the field. Remember, he had problems yesterday. Right now, he runs 19. Well, this three-day delay on this race has really charged these drivers up. I mean, they came out uh, smoking. They're starting to settle in now a little bit, but it was really fun to watch those first few laps. I, th I think Tom and Scott realized yesterday that they really, really goofed off at the last back half of the field. But today, they're really getting with it. They're all single file now, but really going hard. Well, Danny Sullivan, the leaders uh, have apparently been told by the officials and the flagman here, the starter, Brian Howard, that they would drop that green flag much later than they have in past years, in part because they no longer have to be concerned about the turbocharged engine. But, Danny, they've really been bunching up. Well, they have, and I think what happens is Tony comes down on, he's been the leader, comes down off of turn four and slows the pack down, and the guys in the back are accelerating forward that's why you're seeing that bunch field but uh, this restart hasn't affected Tony he's just he's just going away from the field at the moment well Danny I'm not sure that Stewart's slowing the cars down he's just not accelerating as fast as uh, they have in the past he's I think trying to do what the officials wanted him to do is is not accelerate till they get a little closer to the start finish line and the guys in the back uh, just aren't anticipating that well I think you're right Tom but those guys in the back are accelerating 
forward. You can sit here and pour and see him start accelerating, and that front pack is not. Hey, guys, we know that history shows that you can't come down for a restart that slow. That brings back troubles in the back, which we've seen two times now. All right, Stewart's last lap at 210.6 miles an hour. One of those involved in that situation, Mark Dismore, Gary Gerald. Obviously bitterly disappointed. What was the situation on that restart? Were guys overdriving this track? Gary, I saw, I saw Salazar's car sideways. I went to the outside. I had to, I had the whole wreck clear. I was fine. Guerrero behind me must not, bought, must not have been looking ahead. He hit me probably going 50 mile an hour faster. I uh, just tore the back of the car up. I mean, we got a, we had a hell of a chance here, and I just cannot believe guys aren't looking way up ahead. I mean, on a restart, 20 laps into the race, this is just, I can't believe it. Thank you, Mark. Gary. On Roberto Guerrero's car, much more serious than originally thought. They've replaced the entire front nose piece and front wing, but now the upright has been broken. They're replacing both the upper and lower wishbones, part of the push rod, part of the steering connection, and now apparently Roberto Guerrero will decide to get out of the car, and apparently it will be a lengthy repair here in the Pennzoil pits. Paul? Billy Boat. Working on row there, moving up, Calkins to eighth, Velez now in 10th place. We're back in the field. At the front, it remains Stewart, then Robbie Buell and Ari Leyendyke, the top three. Paul, we just talked to Mark Dismore. A lot of frustration in that voice. Uh, more than one driver has been driven into from the backside, and, uh, and, and that's really uncalled for. Billy Boat tries to make the move once again on Billy Rowe. Vermez Velez is just ahead of him. Both the number 11 Conseco car. It's blue and white. It moves past that white car of Rowe. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, we heard from Mark Dinsmore, the other man that was involved, Eliseo Salazar. This is the side pod from his car. Over the wall, they have gone back to Gasoline Alley, gotten a new side pod, and have also gotten a new bonnet. They're going to bring him back out onto this racetrack. Now, those are the reports on some of the cars involved in that situation. Salazar really got booted when Steve Kinzer came flying forward. Kinzer is now in 19th place, a lap behind the lead. trying to make a move. That's Tice Carlson that sits just ahead of him. Replacing John Paul Jr. But of course that move way too early for Ray. Thirty seven laps. Now working the 38th lap at Indianapolis. We got both the Foyt's cars running right there together, Paul, on the racetrack. No, actually, I guess that is Velez in one of the Foyt cars. Fermin Velez, and then Billy Boat, then Billy Rowe, Tice Carlson, Greg Ray. That's that group. Velez currently runs in 10th, as we told you, the blue and white number 33 car, but Boat's closing in. Billy's a rookie here this year, uh, a great short track, dirt track driver, and uh, he's obviously learned, the learning curve is there, and he's learning in a hurry. You know, he's looking really good through turn two. Tom, I just uh, been watching him come through here. He's dipping under the white line, going out to the wall. He's got a good pattern. Gary Gerald, what's the story on Robbie Gordon? He just went jogging by us, headed toward the north pit, and Jerry Punch, we asked him if he got treated for the burns. He shook his head and said no. He said there is a burn on the thigh, also on his hand, and he has a new driver's suit on. He's still hoping to go racing. You saw Billy Boat take the blue and white car of Velez. Now Velez is under attack. Billy Rowe is there trying to move to the inside. Here comes Ray. They're three wide, heading for the turn. Back at the front, Robbie Buell. Robbie Buell at the front. Looking at the fight for second place. The leader, of course, Stewart. Stewart Buell is second. There's third place, Ari Lionsike. That went red, white, and blue car. Buell the green machine. 
Well, we got both the Menards cars running one, two right now, so they're, they've gone to the front, no question. All right, Lion Dyke drifts a little to the left, comes out to make the corner. You can hear him rolling out of the throttle a little bit as he entered that corner, Paul. On to the front stretch, riding with Ari Leyendijk. Buddy Lazier is right there as well. Tom, I'm a little bit surprised he keeps pulling out of that draft like that. You think he'd want to stay in it so it pull the car a little closer up on Robbie Buell. Yeah, he, he looks like he might have a little bit of an understeer, Danny, and maybe just trying to get cleaner air so he's got that downforce. When yeah, he's doing here. it there on the straightaway, that's the part that surprises me. Vincenzo Sosperi comes into the pits, his number eight old Navy car. tenths of a second there. The leader is 6.4 seconds ahead of Robbie Buell. Paul, the Suspiri pit stop could be for tension of what we will see in the next five laps. Remember, all of the teams changed their fuel window because they could top off their tank before the restart on lap 15. If you're going to play it conservative, you might come in a little early on your first stop. Now for Suspiri, they're not quite sure if he can read the telemetry in the dash properly. They brought him in just a tad early. Look for the rest of the leaders to fit around lap 47 to 5-0. So Suspiri so in and out. Roberto Guerrero, is he out? Jerry Punch? Well, Paul, he has plowed down in the car. Roberto, what happened out there on the track? Well, at the, at the restart, obviously I was right behind him, the car in front of me. I believe it was Kinzer. I don't know exactly who it was. And obviously something happened in front of him, and he slowed down. He, you know, I don't know if he got on the brakes, but obviously he slowed down because something happened in front of him, and I had no time to react, and I just ran into the back of him. The crew's continuing to work on pit road. Will you be able to get back out? Yeah, we'll, we'll go back out and, uh, you know, try and run as many laps as we can and see what happens. A tough day, Paul, for a 13-time Indy veteran. Yeah, it would not be a great race without Roberto Guerrero in it. Let's hope that he can, in fact, get back in. The center of focus continues right here at second place on the speedway. The leader, of course, is Tony Stewart. Here comes Ari Leyendijk. Now he's making his bid for second, and he starts right inside Robbie Buell and picks up second place. Tony Stewart Ari Leyendijk on the move again. Tony Stewart follows already lapping cars, getting by. He has no trouble when he finds them. One Run car, the car hard. Car slow on the back Jim stretch. Guthrie, Looks Paul. like Jim Guthrie. Absolutely. Remember his trials and tribulations with the engine yesterday? Have they come back to haunt him? This may what about Lion Dyke? Didn't we just see Lion Dyke there slowing down in the back? Well, it's Guthrie here. The pressure is 18. The motor is running, but it won't fall. That's Jim Guthrie talking with his crew in the pits. Both his wife, Missy, and Mike McGuire. Guys, this should be a normal stop. As I said, they're going to play a conservative, so Guthrie and his crew elected to come in about six laps sooner than the leaders. Checking with the team, they say, we wanted to take on fuel and play this thing conservative. They said, remember, we're still seven laps back. The leader is carving up through the field. You just saw Mike Roth go a lap down to Buddy Lazier. You see the Valvoline speed chart there, 203 miles an hour. Well, that was in traffic, Paul. Actually, uh, he was just trying to get by Groff. I think Buddy's running, actually, a lot closer to the 210 mark. But uh, when a guy gets stuck in traffic, uh, the speed's very tremendous. 45 laps are now complete. I would guess everybody was waiting, was waiting to see if there was going to be a yellow. Oh. Finally, the motor's off for Jim Guthrie. Long roll. His pit is all the way down at the far end. That's his wife missing. So the green light stays on. But of course,
Marcus, if he continues to roll slow, if they start heading for the pits, he's going to be a bit of an obstacle. Well, actually, as slow as he's rolling, he should have been to the inside of that pit lane. He's in the fast lane, and he was out towards the outside pit wall. Uh, that could be a dangerous situation. Tony Stewart reaches up, pulls a tearaway off the front of his helmet. And at lap 46, we expect the leader in any time now. Jeff Ward has just dropped out of his battle and into the pits, Gary. Everything appears to be routine. First opportunity for this crew to go to work. Jim Guthrie going by right now on the outside. As Ward waits, hopes to clear. Now he starts to roll 15 and a half seconds. They still wait for the pits. Jack? Missy? It's not been a good month of May, and this is certainly not the way you wanted it to end. No, we're not over yet. We're just a little low on fuel. I don't know what happened. It's a miscalculator or something. I'm not sure. They're going to try and make him down here. Now Jim Guthrie has made his way back to pit road, and they are putting fuel on board. So this could be the chance for him to refire and get back out, but it still was costly several more laps, Paul. Well, Greg Ray had moved up to 11th place, but at 20 seconds, Almost 27 second pit stop dropped him down to 24th position. Ari Leyendijk. Looks like the leaders now, except for Stewart, are heading down the pit road 100 mile an hour. Yeah, that's Leyendijk and, and Buell on the right together. So second and third come down the pit road. 48th lap is the lap they decided that they could make this stop on. Should be routine for both. of a handling difficulty they said just stay out there and we will change the stagger what that means is the circumference of the rear wheel try to make the car turn a little better he is the first in next lap his teammate tony stewart will be in supposedly at lap 50 it will be ari leyendike well there is the glidden car of tony stewart he's the leader of the race he has not yet come in and Paul, as he, comes to, as he comes to turn two, he looks like he's doing it just effortlessly. He isn't even going down to the white line at the apex. Well, the good news, Bobby, is that he's been able to stretch this first stop a little bit longer than uh, some of the other leaders, and that'll be a good sign for him later as the race develops. I think that kind of surprises us, doesn't it, Tom? Because he's the one that's going the fastest today. It really does. Uh, usually you use more fuel when you run that hard. Jim Guthrie, they're trying to get him restarted, trying to get him back out. Not going to work. The leader is going to go for the pits. Here comes Tony Stewart. Buddy Lazier has. Hey, you got a clear pit. You got a clear pit. Get it on the mark. Get it on the mark. That's the voice of Larry Curry, the crew chief, looking for the marks. You can see them there. The yellow and white tape. Stewart hits them perfectly. Here is the problem with Stewart right now, guys. Go, 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 go. Tony has no telemetry back to the pit, so Larry Curry must communicate with Tony to find out fuel consumption as Buddy Lazier comes on the pit road. The buddy came in right behind the leader, so he did not pick up the lead of the race. Davey Hamilton was sitting in third at the time the leaders decided to come in. 17 seconds in and out for Buddy. Stewart rolls out. You heard the call to reset the fuel meter. Well, not only the fuel meter, but also you heard Larry Curry telling Tony that they were going to change the stagger one point. Now, that's not a very big adjustment. They must be very happy with that car. Now, they sure weren't interested in many changes at all, and Tony appeared to agree. He is coming up to speed now. Takes a, almost a half a lap with the gearing that they're using for race day for them to come up. Billy Boat will assume the lead of the race with all of these stops going on for one lap. And then the anticipation is that to uh, Tony Stewart is going to pick up the lead as soon as he gets back across the line. So at least for one, there is a new leader of the Indianapolis 500, and it's Billy Boat. We'll return to more of the 500 after this message and a word from our ABC station. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're back in Indianapolis as predicted. Tony 
Stewart resumed the lead when Billy Boat headed into the pits. This is the battle that matters at the moment. It's for fifth place as Jeff Ward is trying to hold off Vincenzo Sospiri. Now, don't forget, if you already are not doing this, grab your computer, drag it over by the TV because you can watch the live timing and scoring of every position in this field on America Online, the keyword ABC Sports. And by the way, you can also get Jack Roots weekly racing update. So Sperry comes closing up on the back of Jeff Ward. Back up with Ari Leyendijk here. The wave foam car. After the pit stops, there's a lot of traffic that they need to maneuver through. And Leyendijk, uh, you can see here, is just trying to set up traffic ahead. Lion Dyke carefully threading his way through traffic. There is the leader, the bright yellow and orange car just ahead of him. Well, he got a great run off the corner there, Paul. He set those two guys up perfectly. A fantastic run, in fact, on the 11 car, that blue and uh, white car. That's Billy Boat. Paul, Tony Stewart is starting to slow just a little bit from the first couple of laps after that pit stop. He's reported in. He's got a push. They call it an understeer. He says it's worse than the last time. So obviously, the changes that Larry Curry made, Tom Steva, weren't sufficient. Well, either they weren't sufficient or they didn't uh, go the right direction, possibly. I'm not sure, but they obviously, this set of tires doesn't match the car as well as the first set they had on. Four, ten, four. We just got to hang on, man. Well, Tom, as well, you know, too, as you know, too, sometimes a stagger doesn't come up as, Yo. uh, as high as you want it. Those tires don't come up to work exactly the way you want it. Yeah, sometimes you don't get the match, but we got a blown motor here in the jacuzzi car. Well, finally, the third caution of the day, and that engine is without question done now, Missy. The I think we figured is, that. I, Paul, I think we figured that engine's been broke probably five times. I think this time it has a death notice on it. Now it heads for the pits, and they are devastated in Jim Guthrie's pits. He's on the back straightaway, Paul. I think he's just going to park it back here. As Jim Guthrie pulls, trying to get off of the race course and out of the way, we'll look at the Valvoline race summary under the yellow. How sad. They put so much into the 500. They won at Phoenix. There's the Valvoline race summary after 50 laps. Tony Stewart, average speed at 131, doesn't matter at all. And the cautions, cars out, the yellow light now flies for the third time today. After 50 laps out of the race, M. Pedri, Sam Schmidt, Kenny Breck, Alfonso Giafoni, Stefan Gregoire from yesterday, and Claude Bourbonnet, Mark Dismore out today. So the happiness of Phoenix, the love story rolls through today and ends in tears for Missy Guthrie and her husband Jim. The engine has finally let go. He's out of the race. Tony Stewart is the leader. First running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Oldsmobile and your authorized Aurora retailers. Root, put it on and you're ready to play. Root, it's all part of the game. Nortel introduces power networks. Do you have a power network? And Miller Lite, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. Back live at Indianapolis, 60 laps complete. If you've turned in to see your favorite ABC daytime shows, they will return tomorrow. On May 31st, join ABC for third round coverage of the Memorial, sponsored by Dean Witter. We'll see last year's champion Tom Watson defend his title against Byron Nelson winner Tiger Woods. We expect to go back to green flag racing very shortly here. Tony Stewart is the leader. Ari Leyendijk is second. Robbie Buell is third. And then Jeff Ward with a spectacular run today. And then Scott Goodyear, followed by Buzz Calkins, Eddie Cheever, Davey Hamilton, and Vincenzo Sospiri, who has been in the pits now twice in the past several laps. There's the leaderboard. Tony Stewart at the top. So at Indianapolis, the winds continue to blow a bit here. Uh, weather, while clear at the moment, is still uncertain throughout the remainder of the day. Now, we mentioned Vincenzo Sospiri. What about him, Jack? Well, Paul, I talked to Mark White, who's calling the shots on pit road for Vincenzo, and he reports that they have had on the onboard 
dash, what they call a fuel alarm continually going off. Now remember, they pitted early, earlier than most of the leaders, and he said, under this caution, we'll sacrifice track position to make sure we keep the tank full. The alarm continues to go off. They think it's a malfunction, but they're not sure, Paul. Tony Stewart at the head of the line. He has led all but one lap today. Billy Boat led that other lap. The other thing, so Sperry actually got a warning for a pit speed violation, so they're having some stress here early. They got away with it, no penalty. Here comes Ari, going to try him again as they come to the green. Ari pulled off to the inside. Now he pulls up alongside. They drag race down into turn one. Ari clips some of the balloons from the spectacle yesterday and moves into the lead. Stewart back to second now. And Ari's really pulling out when he gets over to turn two. Paul with a real high line, both he and Tony. Well, he just got a great jump on Stewart on that restart. I think you will watch Stewart maybe close the gap, but he's got that understeer problem, and they didn't stop there to try to correct it. An entire group back in the field maneuvering for position as they head down into turn three and sweep into the north chute. Good pass underneath there by uh, the motorcycle guys. They're they're here in first. You're riding on board with Jeff Ward. The entire, excuse me, Eddie Cheever, the entire group battling back here. Jack Miller is back there as well. The air, the dirty air, and the clean air must make a big difference. Because now you see Lion Dyke pulling out on Tony Stewart pretty good. Tony obviously doesn't want to run too close because of the messed up air, I think, folks. Com combination of a number of cars. You see the blue and white car of Durant sitting there. Here comes uh, Steve Kinzer moving inside. Dr. Jack Miller. That's Paul Durant, the blue and white car, the Conseco car just ahead. They're doing a lot more side-by-side -side racing right at the apex of the, the corners than I've seen in the past, Paul. It's, it's sort of fun to watch. Boy, funny move by Durant there. He didn't want to use all of the course. He's staying down to the inside. Watch him there. That the predominantly white with blue trim car just ahead of Steve Kinzer, the guy with the new nose on his machine. Well, a lot of times if the car is good, you don't have to use up the whole racetrack, and uh, especially this early in the race. Further back in the field. Davey Hamilton trying to get around Dr. Jack Miller. Hamilton, the orange and white car. Red, white, and blue, the colors on Jack Miller's car. Hamilton, number 14, moves to the inside now. You can see as they come off the corner, they're able to really slip string or get that graph working for each other, and it, uh, it just pulls them by uh, the car in front of them. Hamilton wants to get up and battle with Cheever. So Sperry just behind wants to get up and around Tice Carlson. That's the car that they're lapping. He's affected the move of these three cars are all battling for seventh place. Currently Eddie Cheever is in seventh. Five eighths of a mile long the back stretch. Looks like they're turning the fastest lap right now, Paul, about 213 miles an hour. You saw Jeff Ward's car there, the number 52. It's almost identical. In fact, it is identical to Eddie Cheever's, except for the number 51 or 52. 51, of course, for Eddie Cheever. Valvoline speed chart last time around. And here is what Jeff Ward is looking at on his dashboard right now. Telemetry coming out of the fifth place car. Well, down here, you're seeing the G-forces. It's nothing down the straightaway. It's a lateral G-force measurement. But you see as he goes to the corner how it climbs up to about the three point. Three G's in the middle of that corner right now. Jeff Ward, the 52 first plus car, the leader just turned a lap at 213.4 miles an hour. That's the fastest lap thus far. And it was turned by Ari Leyendyke. When he gets out and runs clear, he's flying. But that tachometer's right on the screen. There's somebody turning an awful lot of RPM. They swore that they said they were going to turn. It was interesting to watch the telemetry and the G-force in, uh, in uh, the Ward car. In turns one and two, he was only able to pull about three Gs down at the other end of the racetrack. In turns three and four, he was a lot closer to four Gs down there. So he's ob obviously getting through that end of the race course a lot quicker. Dennis Vitolo, car 54, comes in. Now, the yellow and orange car 
And there's third place, yellow and orange car is Stewart. He's second. There's third place. And Lazier, there's that purple car with yellow trim. You're on board it now. That's third place. So those are the top three. The Valvoline speed chart here, 209. Last lap for Buddy Lazier for the leader, Ari Leyendijk. 211.7 last time by. It looks like Buddy is having trouble again with his back. He tends to uh, clench his hands, raise them in the air to try and help relieve the pressure on his back. Well, that's circulation problems, and he's trying to keep the circulation going. He knows it's a lot uh, a longer time out there than what he's had so far. It was well, a problem actually, last year, and he won the 500. Gary Gerald? Greg Ray out of the car, overheating problem. What was the first rookie experience at Indy like for you? Well, I was really looking forward to it. And the car was running great. The team's done a great job. And, you know, I think we had a good car. And unfortunately, we just had a mechanical problem. A tough, tough story for one of the rookies in the field, Paul. Yeah, and that's the sixth Oldsmobile Aurora engine out of the race. The cars are so loud. You saw Greg pausing there. They can't hear themselves. They're pretty sure we can't hear them. So Ari Leyendijk is leading the Indy 500, followed by Tony Stewart and Robbie Buell. We'll be back with more. Back at Indianapolis, you ride with Buddy Lazier. He's fourth place. Robbie Buell, there he is. The Green Quaker State car is third place. That's Billy Boat on that blue and white machine in between them. Buell was finally able to get around him. Now Lazier is having to try to get around the Boat car. And Boat is back in the field. He's down a lap running 11th place. Jack Aroot, what, what's going on with Buddy's hands? Well, Buddy Lazier said, his father, Bob Lazier, says that what Buddy does there is to try and bring himself back into focus. Focus. It's not back related. It's actually more related to trying to just get some circulation, but also to maintain his focus in the cockpit. He said they start to go a little bit numb because he squeezes so hard. Still on with Lazier. He got a round bow. Tom Sneva, we see in each of the four corners a blacker strip of pavement. And we didn't see that last year. No, we didn't. They run the stock cars here in the summer now, and uh, they were a little bit hard on the racetrack, so they had to repave uh, that section of the racetrack in each one of the corners. So riding with Buddy Lazier, Lion Dyke, Stewart, Buell, here comes Ward. He runs in sixth. He's coming in for a stop. So we expect stops by the leaders of the race just any moment now. Lion Dyke is the leader. We might see Stewart come in a little early. He was the last one of the leaders to stop uh, on the first segment, but the car, the chassis isn't quite right. So it'll be interesting to see if he tries to stretch it this time or he wants to get in sooner and make that correction for the chassis and the handling. As you ride with Lion Dyke, you will notice from time to time in the banner, we do add other information in like we just gave you Lion Dyke's uh, last lap at speed. By the way, we look at the last lap from the Valvoline speed chart of Lion Dyke at 207, the average speed of the race at 142.132 miles an hour. It's beginning now to steadily climb after those early cautions. We do expect Robbie Buell to head for the pits on the next lap. Jeff Ward comes out of the pits after his stop. LSAO Salazar, here comes Buell. They've laid out for LSAO Salazar from Chile, who's still in this race. And Gary Gerald, here comes Robbie Buell. A wide open pit, so he'll have a great angle. He comes right toward us now, ducks it in, gets the cheers of the crowd, perfectly placed on the mark. The Menard team in action. A rear wing wicker change, Paul, and having some problems getting it out. They wanted to either get it in place, they didn't change it. I don't know if that was by design. We continue to watch. Now they continue to work with the wicker. They've got a problem back there. It's stubborn. It won't come out. He's going to have to stay with that current handling setup. He's off the jack. 22 seconds. Boy, that was costly, and they didn't get the change they wanted. So a long stop for Robbie Buell. And now Eddie Cheever goes out. Well, they didn't get the adjustment made on the rear wing, so the next time in, they'll probably go to the front of the car and try to make the 
the pressure balance change at the front rather than trying to do it at the back. That was the car owner, John Menard, on the radio with Robbie Buell. The leader of the race, Lion Dyke, darts for pits. Slows it down. Okay, you got these guys are setting up. They're going to have to come around Rocket. Remember your pit speed. Well, Jack Arood, here he comes. Lion Dyke, the leader of the race. The Rocket he was referring to is his teammate, Scott Goodyear. 100 mile an hour speed limit. Ari Lion Dyke is asked for no changes in the car. Now, the key right now in changing tires is to make it smooth so you don't knock any of the wheel weights off. And there is a problem. The air jack did not go upright. Skip Ball having a problem on the right front tire. It's got to go back up again. 17.5 seconds, Paul. Not a good stop. No, some long stops by the leader of the race. By the way, Eddie Cheever was in and out. His stop was 16.1 seconds. Here is Tony Stewart, hey, who has picked the up the leader of the get race. Get on the mark. Nice and easy. Get it in here on the mark. We're going to do a little stagger and a half a turn in both front wings. Now the key will, will be to see whether or not they can gain some of the time on Lion Dyke's 17 and a half second stop. You heard Tom, did heard. you hear those changes that they said they were going to make? So they were going to put some more front wing in that car and change the stagger. That's pretty substantial change. Well, he was complaining about understeer. Uh, the last thing they did is before they exited the pits is the, uh, the crew guy went to the front and took a half a turn on both both front wing adjustments. With the stop, Goodyear comes up to third place. He's out in 15 and a half seconds. Lights Three the tire. Full stop. You heard him there talk about the rear bar full stop. They've got sway bar controls in the car, both at the front and the rear. They're adjusting the bars as, as they put fuel in the car. Tony Stewart on the inside line comes up to speed. Here's Buddy Lazier. He picks up the lead of the race, but of course he has not yet stopped. He is due in next time around. It's interesting, Paul, on the amount of difference in the fuel mileage we see from the fast cars, the guys are running up in front. We've had 21 laps of green flag. Lazier on the pit road. It would appear that he's getting... Lion Dyke, Stewart, they continue to go at one another. Tom, did yep. you see that? He was moving, he came to, out of four, and Tony Stewart moved down to the inside. Lion Dyke just went around him on the outside going into one. Well, that probably surprised Tony a little bit because Excuse that me, was a Excuse on-side Excuse me, Tom, Buddy pass. Lazier. Buddy Lazier is on pit road. This should be a nominal stop for Lazier. They're going to change all the tires. Trouble on the right Nobody rear. Is. You can hear they're keeping the motor revved up. 16.8, it could have been a 15. Reset your fuel. Reset your fuel. You heard him talk about reset your fuel. It's a, again, it's a, it's a gauge, a calculation that they have to reset as they leave the uh, pits with a full tank. Yeah, it counts backward from from 35 gallons, and when they get down to whatever fuel level they've determined, some five, some 3.7, that tells them it's time to come back into the pits. So now the leaders have completed their stop once again at Indianapolis, 118 laps to go in the 500. Now, Davey Hamilton driving for A.J. Foyt picks up the lead of the race, and Hamilton comes in for the stop, Gary. Well, he had been complaining, Paul, that the car had been a little bit loose, and what Tommy LeMessa decided to do was not make a wing adjustment, but rather make a slight air pressure adjustment on the right side. Right side and left side tires going on, the fueling almost complete. The wheel must be tight. No problem with the left rear now. They finally wait to get it completely full of fuel, and he is down and away. And with that stop and Lion Dyke's move, Lion Dyke becomes the leader of the race, followed by Stewart. Buddy Lazier is up to third. Scott Goodyear is fourth. With that somewhat difficult stop, Robbie Buell has stopped down into the fifth position. Billy Boat is 11th. We'll return with more of the Indianapolis 500, the 80th running, after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC's Wide World of Sports. 
Back in Indianapolis, we're watching third place Buddy Lazier. Last couple of laps, he has been falling further down on speed. He turned the last lap at 202 to the leaders in second place, 210, 211. Now, if you were watching on America Online on your computer, you would have seen that, that this car is actually slowing down the last couple of laps. The key word for AOL, ABC Sports. And by the way, if it has a race stats, historical information on the Indy 500 bios on the drivers, any of that, then it's the IRL website. So, Gary Gerald, what's going on with Buddy Lazier? Well, they say that they don't have a problem. They watch with great concern as he flies by in the front straightaway. Ron Dawes talking with Lee Koonsman. Ron Hemmelgarn is here. Maybe we can get a quick word. Gary, he just dropped below 200 on the well, last lap. He went below 200 miles an hour in that last we lap, Ron. We got a car in front of us blocking us. 44 is blocking us. We can't get around him. They just keep throwing a flag at him. We can't get around him. You're not, you're not concerned about possible power problems? I can, I can hear you. You're not concerned about possible power problems? No, no, we're being blocked out here. We can't get around him. He's all over the track. All right, that's the story from the Lazier camp. 44 is Steve Kinzer. There's the picture. Last lap, Kinzer ran at 200. This is Buddy Lazier's chance to get by. He's angry about it, too. Well, some of it probably has a little bit to do with uh, Kinzer probably being able to get to the corner about as fast as Buddy. And uh, even though uh, Steve's down a lap or two, uh, he's almost as quick as Buddy is right now. There's the Valvoline speed chart 202 last time for Buddy Lazier. The story of the Guthrie family. It has now become a sad one, Jack. Well, Paul, if you were with us yesterday and the day before, you heard about the Guthries, and this is not the way we wanted to meet you afterwards. Finally, the engine gave up the ghost. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, the Aurora was running really good, and uh, we were passing people. We were racing. We were having fun. Now, Missy, we saw you as he was coming in, limping in, and, and you just put your head down and, and you started to cry. Is it that much emotion out here at the Indy 500? It really is. Um, the guys have worked so hard. Um, I feel for them. I feel for Jim. I mean, but it just wasn't meant to be. But you're the ever-eternal optimist. You'll be back. We'll be back. Bigger and better than ever in Dallas. Paul, that's what makes this such a great family. Jim and Missy Guthrie. The love continues. Back on board, Lion Dyke. Lion Dyke last time around at 209.9 miles an hour. There's second place, and you see the interval. Looking back, you remember the reference that Danny Sullivan made as Ari Lion Dyke just seemed to crawl right up on the back of Tony Stewart and just buzz past him. But you can see Tony sort of moved to the inside. I, he probably thought Ari was going to try the inside, and Ari said, hey, I'll just go around the outside on this guy. Nice sweeping outside pass. You look out the back of Lion Dyke's car now. He's got a good half straightaway of distance back to the second-place car. You know, you know what? That's only 2.3 seconds, Bobby Hunter. On board now. You saw a glimpse there of Tony Stewart's car. Salazar is just pulling off the pit apron, leaving the pit the number two turn. He's dead getting out of his car, Paul. That was Buddy Lazier coming around Davey Hamilton. Hamilton is now down in eighth place, a lap behind the lead, and the yellow comes out apparently for Salazar. That'll let Scott Goodyear, who was in fourth place, close in behind Lazier. Salazar safely out of the car. Yellow comes on. It's the fourth of the day at Indianapolis. And 23 cars are left running as Salazar pulls off. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by the all-new Regal GS, official car of the supercharged family. Rogaine, medically proven to regrow hair for men and women. Digital Equipment Corporation, digital whatever it takes. And Coors Life. Frost fruit to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Looking down on the pylon in the main straightaway, the pit area at Indianapolis. Uh, amazing how many people actually came back on this, the third day of the race. Most of them, of course, have moved to seats that they found empty up in the top. The, the visuals come from the Goodyear blimp spirit, and it's Captain Patrick Henry of Parsons, West Virginia 
that keeps control of the giant blimp as it floats over the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Join ABC Sports on June 7th for the 129th running of the Belmont Stakes. Silver Charm attempts to become the first Triple Crown winner since 1978. So the yellow is on at Indianapolis. The leader of the race under yellow, Ari Lyondyke, then Tony Stewart, Buddy Lazier. I'm going to give you that running order. There it is. The first seven cars all on the lead lap. Ward just stopped in the pits, so Sperry followed him in. Ward had a little trouble getting out of the pits. And there from 26th on down, the cars out. And we'll be uh, seeing Salazar. Salazar Paulus the race is, as well. Salazar's car has been on fire down here. The left rear was on fire. Obviously, the brakes were locked up. Robbie Buell was fifth place in and out. Salazar had climbed out of his car. So no factor for that except for the damage to the car. A little bit of a race out of the pits right there. And, uh... and Billy Bowden, the blue and white car, came up right behind him. Wouldn't it have been a shot for position, I don't think. No, but they're racers. You know, they don't care if they're a lap or two laps down. They, or they uh, don't know. <laughs> That's true. So as Robbie Buell comes back up to speed, he came into the pits under the yellow, fifth position. There's the Salazar car. They get it off the racetrack. It's on the hook. So 96 laps are complete. In four, it will be an official race. Should should the rain come back in, there's no sign of that at the moment. We can see all the way to downtown Indianapolis from atop the grandstand here. Comes back, should be a green flag. We come back on the inside of the pit wall with one of the veterans, Eddie Cheever. Electronic problems of some sort have spoiled what had been a great run. I know you started this day back in 27th, got it up to 7th at one point. Electronic problems? How was it other than no, that? I, I don't think it's, I think the timing chain is broken. Uh, the car was running really good. I was going through traffic very easily. Uh, it's always a severe disappointment not to finish this race. This is the greatest race in the world. And um, I had a car that could have won today. And we came all the way from the back, all the way to the front, got back up right there with the leaders. And we're just getting ready to make a run for it. And uh, the engine stopped. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. We have another car now in with Jeff, who's standing in a very strong sixth place. And I'm sure Jeff is going to give him hell all the way to the end. So there still might be a first plus card, first place. We don't know yet. It's very possible. Eddie Cheever optimistic for his teammate Ward as they head for turn four and hopefully the green flag. Third time that Eddie Cheever has felt that frustration in his eight 500 mile race starts. Well, they're very slow down here in turn four. Ari Leindyke's bringing them off very slow. They'll be coming back to the green flag. Again, they've been holding the flag until almost on top of the line. Brian Howard gives them the green. Acceleration, there's a jam up back at the head of the pit. But Ari Landyke is able to pull away first, second, and third. All separate nicely. Scott Goodyear runs in fourth place. He will be trying to make his move on Buddy Lazier. Vincenzo Sosperi passed Jeff Ward as he came into the pits under the yellow, and so they have penalized him. Now, that, we thought that was him. It was not. That was just an unscheduled stop on board with Buddy Lazier now. He chases second place Tony Stewart onto the front stretch again. Well, you got the top four cars coming right at you right now, Paul. Uh, you know, we're going to have a good battle as this race develops. And as they cross the line, they completed the 250th mile, the 100th lap. The Indianapolis 500 is now an official race. Should weather affect this day as it has the past two? So Spiri has not yet been shown the back black flag that would call him in for a stop and go penalty. Well, I just was going to say. And all the wondering we've been doing about how these cars were going to do in their first race, they really look like they handled good. It looks like the drivers had a lot of, lot of, lot of good feelings about them in the turn. So Sperry has now received the black flag. That will pull him out of seventh place and into the pit area to answer that penalty for passing Jeff Ward. Scott Goodyear, there he is, that blue over white car, now closing on Buddy Lazier. At the front of the field, there's Ari Leyendijk, red, white, and blue. 
You talked about Goodyear. Um, at the beginning of the race, he wasn't in the mix, but he's had three or four opportunities to adjust the car on pit stops, and now he's right there. And Tom, he wants to make some more adjustments in the upcoming pit stop between 102 and 107 is the window for Scott Goodyear. He's complaining that the car is understeering. That means he wants to push out towards the wall, look for a wing adjustment when that crew does service in about three or four laps. Well, if he's got an understeer, uh, it probably isn't too severe, or if it is and they can correct it, uh, he's going to be a factor as we continue on down this race. He's already getting a good draft off the of Buddy Lazier. You can see the two cars right there, the purple on the left and the white one right behind. And 214 for both first and second place the last time around. So the leaders are now picking up the pace. There's the Delta Fawcett car as he's holding off the charge by Scott Goodyear. Here's the Valvoline race summary at the halfway point in the run with Ari Leyendyke as the leader and 144 miles an hour, the average speed owing to the four cautions. We've had four leaders, six different lead changes. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Clarification now from Mark Wyda on Vincenzo Susperi and the black flag. They had gotten clearance from a trackside USAC official to make that stop as their black flag stop. That word had not yet apparently been communicated upstairs. They said it's okay. They've let him go. But now, for whatever reason, Wyda and the team go back over the wall. And I, they told us that he had cleared on the black flag. He wouldn't have to take it. Now here he comes. This may be another problem. They're stopping him. We watch in the upper right-hand corner. Send him back. Don't see any lakes, we don't see anything. Everything looks fine. We're putting the engine cover on. We'll try her again here. Nice. You saw Roberto Guerrero come out and in fact just head back in. They're trying to keep that car going, but as he came out, he was 78 laps behind the leader. It's interesting, uh, it's inspired. they've got some kind of problem. They took the uh, the hood off, the bonnet off, uh, didn't find anything and just stuck it back on. But these things don't usually correct themselves by uh, just opening the door and shutting it. Battle on the track is the Delta Fawcett car, number 91. And ahead of him is this car, number two, Tony Stewart. We expect Ari Leyendyke to come into the pits in just three laps now. The other battle on the course beyond this of the lead is Lazier, Goodyear, Buell, and Ward. A four-way battle for third. Well, one of the fascinating things about your leader, Ari Leyendijk, is before the race, he sat down with his engineer, Tim Waldrop, and they decided they wanted to turn the engine no more than 10,000 to 10,100 RPM throughout the afternoon. Thus far, they've stayed in that range, and Leyendijk says that's more important until the final 50 miles than where you are running in terms of track position. That could be really scary for the competition in the last 50 if he's already up front. Vincenzo Sosperi spent a minute and 21 seconds in the pit that time, and he's back out. Well, you can see here that Stewart is actually closing the, gla the gap a little bit on uh, Lion Dyke, but again, we're close to a pit stop, so... Uh, don't Bill. watch him go through turn two. It looks like Stewart could pull up on line dike any time he wanted. I think he just gets a nice draft there. Bobby, did you see the Valvoline speed chart there? 214 miles an hour last time around. Boy, the pace is coming up. Yeah, and he's really getting a good draft at that speed, you know? Now, Roberto Guerrero's story. Gary? Well, Paul, he came right off the line on pit road, pointed in the gasoline alley, coasted and got a push from a safety official just inside gasoline alley. You can see Roberto has climbed out, repositioning the wheel, and yet to pull the helmet off. We're not sure just what ended up ending his day for Pagan Racing, but great disappointment for this popular veteran. Katie Guerrero, who normally would be at his side, had to go home to California and could not be there and is not there to console him at this point. In his last nine 500, Guerrero has had eight DNFs. We 
saw Roberto there. I you remember at the beginning of the race, he was involved in some of that carnage. Uh, there was a lot of damage on that car, and when you're 78 laps down and you're trying to hurry to uh, repair a car and go out and try to run 200 miles an hour, uh, that's not a real comforting thing for a driver to have to experience. Gary Gerald. Roberto Guerrero, quickly tell us what happened after they replaced the suspension part. Yeah, the guys worked really hard in changing it, and uh, we just went out to fill it out. If there's still still something wrong with the steering, you couldn't even keep it going straight on the on the straightaway. So, you know, we decided to just park it for now. Thanks, Roberto. Lion Dyke, I believe, headed toward the pits. Well, he works his way through the corner. Tony Stewart's right there. We'll see now if he darts for the pit road. Seems to back a little bit out of it. Yes, Ari Leyendyke makes the turn. And Leyendyke will head down for the pits. Okay, Tony Stewart picks up the lead. Come around them. Well, the first any thing, here we're asking for no, any adjustments. No, I do have to set up each time. Put them on a different sequence. We'll work on it. Here we are. Ari Leyendyke using a limiter to maintain his speed limit under 100 miles an hour. The crew goes to work. Now remember, they had a problem on the right front during the last stop. This time, Skip Ball, no problem. He's complete. He's the first to be completed on the tires. You heard Leyendyke say, no changes. Up, 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 up. Now they've got a problem. Up. They've got to put it back up. 18.3 seconds. A very big disappointment on the left front. A long stop. Here is Tony Stewart. He, of course, picked up the lead. All we're going to do is change tires and fuel. Tires and fuel. There are the instructions from Larry Curry to Tony Stewart. He dips in, drops the speed, and the crew goes to work. Now, remember, it's 35 gallons of methanol. As Scott Goodyear streaks by Tony Stewart, begins looking for his spot. Goodyear hits the marks as Stewart's crew completes their work. A little slow, 14 flat, but a little slow coming out. Meanwhile, Scott Goodyear taking four tires again, a nominal stop, but remember, he wanted a wing adjustment. They've adjusted the car, and Goodyear's away. 15 seconds. Set of tires of sickness. Sickness. And they warn him about the set of tires that is on there. Stickers, brand new. Yeah, brand new tires, uh, that could be a little bit of a gamble. You saw the ad wing adjustment at the front of the car, a full turn on both front wings, so they made some major changes. What the driver will do here is he'll, he'll set it the throttle a little bit the first couple corners after coming out of, a, out of the pitch. Full load of fuel, new tires, uh, major aerodynamic change in the car. We'll have to see how it does. Uh, how it works for Scott. And as he comes out, there is Buddy Lazier who picks up the lead of the race. Robbie Buell, by not stopping, drops into second place. Jeff Ward drops into third. And Buddy Lazier is going to stay out. So Buddy Lazier continues now to lead the 500. That's Scott Goodyear, the Nortel car just ahead of him. And a crash. And a crash. Got a problem. Yellow comes out, car against the wall. Two Billy cars Rowe. up against it, the wall. That's Billy like. Rowe in the 50 car. There's another one behind him. There's two cars. There's another car in there. Can you see it, Danny? No, I cannot. It's all covered by the smoke. It's just off my view, but there's a big, big cloud of smoke, as you can see. Looked like that smoke came off of the rear tires. The engine kept running. Yeah, the safety trucks were right across there, but there were cars on the track that couldn't get across right away to them. It almost looks like that might be Scott Goodyear's car. The cowling looks similar to it on the other side. No, Danny, it's Billy Rowe, and the good news is uh, we did see his hand go up as he was still in the wall before the smoke engulfed it. Rowe was 14. It looks like Paul Durant may be that second car. I'm not sure yet, so I'm, I'm, let's... Let's just hold off on that. Yeah, Scott Goodyear yeah. just went by on the track, so he wasn't part of it. Well, Durant and yet another one, and they're working with Durant. On the right. Car on the Seiko right. Car. Durant. That's the number one car right there. Side by side, the lower car, and 
They just touched and away they went. Yeah. Actually, Billy got passed by one car, and I don't think he knew there was two cars coming. If we go back to the first replay, Billy let somebody go underneath him. Now look at it. We're, we're looking at slow mo. This is the way we saw it originally. Durant's almost on the grass down there, trying to get out of his way. Yep. Billy Rose they just pushed him down too. No far, room. Just, Billy pushed him down right into the grass, too far there. Bob, That's if you go back farther though, you'll see that Billy got passed by one car, and I think he just didn't see that there was two cars coming through. Yeah, actually, what you had was both of Boyd's cars, right. Boat and Durant. Boat was ahead, though well, they weren't racing for position. Boat was actually running seventh. And Durant to further lap back in 13th, but they were together on the racetrack. So maybe he saw one, figured that was it. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Well, Tom, but still, the 50 car had to be aware that Durant was down there on the inside of him. You still got to be aware of the cars around you. And he just got looked like he got down there, and Durant was almost in the grass. It looked like his left front, nowhere to go, and they finally touched. He might have been in the grass, Danny. That was he was a long ways under the apron there, under the white line. The USAC safety crews are all there. They're giving whatever aid is necessary for Paul Durant. And of course, you uh, you saw Billy get out of his car, and he's fine. So we're going to just keep track of this situation here, and we'll report back as soon as we have a clear understanding. We'll return with more of the Indy 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Is that the 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Well, we're back live in Indianapolis. We're under our fifth caution period of the day. It caused when uh, several cars uh, got in a confusing situation heading into the north end of the track. It ended up with two cars against the wall. Billy Rowe was one of them. Paul Durant was the other. We'll go back and look at it, Tom Sneva. Yeah, but this is coming down the back straightaway. What we see right here, you'll see both of Foyt's cars. Billy Boat is the lead car in that pack. Billy Rowe is over here on the outside. They get underneath. Boat goes underneath, and Paul Durant is the back car. He thinks that Boat or that Billy Rowe sees him. He's committed. He's got the draft. He's going underneath. Now at the last minute, Durant realizes that no, Boat or Row doesn't see him. He tries to back out, but at that point it's too late and they get together. Boyd's two Conseco cars are nearly identical. One is number one, one is number 11. They're both blue and white. And now they're on the hook. And the indication is that uh, everybody is out of the car and okay, but we'll wait, of course, when you touch the wall here, you head into the emergency medical center in the infield. And so we'll wait for a, a formal announcement that they are okay, but that's certainly how it appeared. A.J. Foyt has lost, uh, lost some machinery now. Well, what's amazing, too, it's always been the number one car has been the one that's been a uh, Foyt's car that have been involved in the accidents uh, throughout the month of May here. And it was the car originally scheduled for Scott Sharp to drive, but of course he had not one but two accidents, the second accident causing a concussion. The doctors finally said, no, you are not going to run in the Indy 500. Uh, we just won't clear you for that. So Scott Sharp normally driving for A.J. Foyt and a co-champion of the IRL becomes a spectator here today. But he was there, though, Tom. Some good news. That yellow came out at an opportune moment for him. Well, actually, there was a couple of the drivers that needed uh, a pit window at that time. And Guys, what it did was it gave him a chance, Jack, to come in, make a stop. And guys, it was tough for him because he was supposed to stop the lap before the yellow. Now, as you watch from the high camera, Lazier been running in, comes in. Now, you see at the nose of the car, there is a big plastic bag over the wing adjusters. In the interim, look to the back of the car. Ron Hemmelgarn radioed to the crew and said, get the starter in position. We should be out of fuel. They put it in. They are ready. As soon as they drop, they tell him, turn it over. You see the crew member at the head of the car waving his arm. This was smart thinking on the part of Ron Hemmelgarn, Ron Dawes, and the crew. They knew that they had just about run out of fuel. Now, granted, they had onboard telemetry to tell them, but there was no emotion here. They just went through what they needed to do. 
got the car restarted and sent him out on his way. Well, again, you can imagine, uh, first of all, you can see how long he's in the pits. Now, if that's under green, uh, his race is almost over, but he caught the yellow, and uh, that's some of the fortunes at, at the Brickyard. Yeah, and Jack Aroot, will you tell uh, that crew that Bobby Unser's not done with his lunch? It's still in that bag, and he'll need it back. Here's the report. Billy Rowe is okay. He's fine. Uh, Paul Durant is awake and alert at the hospital. That comes from race control. So we remain under yellow, 118 laps complete, and Robbie Buell picks up the lead. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Miller Live, who reminds you that anything can happen at Miller time. Valvoline Durablend, the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil. Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is the taste. Remember to follow ABC Sports Live timing and scoring updates. America Online, keyword ABC Sports. And next week, watch the deuce, ESPN2, next Saturday, 31st of May, for the qualifying at the Miller 200. Then tune in to ESPN on Sunday for the race. Brought to you from the West Dallas, Wisconsin track, the Miller 200 on ESPN next Saturday and Sunday on ESPN and the Deuce. We'll come back for the green flag because they're getting ready to go again. If you tuned in to see your favorite ABC daytime show, they'll return tomorrow. Today, it's the 81st running of the Indy 500 on the third day of its rain delay, but we're after 121 la 120 laps now, coming up to 121st. Robbie Buell is the leader of the race, but as you can see, his green Quaker State car, there is separation then, two cars back to the second place car. That's the yellow and orange machine, the Glidden car of Tony Stewart. So Menard cars run first and second. Buzz Calkins has just headed into the pits. There he is in that number 12 bright red Bradley machine. And Jeff Ward, the rookie, is sitting in third place. He is uh, back behind Tony Stewart. Gary Gerald? At the entrance to Gasoline Alley, here's a shot that you don't see very often. A sales Salazar got back into the cockpit. They repaired the left rear brake rotor. He wants to race. The gate has been closed, however. USAC officials have told them, nope, you went back to the garage for the repairs. You cannot come back out. They're appealing the process and waiting. Jack? Gary, another gate has been closed for your leader, Robbie Buell. Talking back to John Menard, they had said they were going to go 10 green flag laps and then pit. Then they tried to rethink it. But before they could bring him in under this yellow, they gave the one-to-go signal. All Menard said to Buell is, I guess the die is cast. I'm a little surprised with this uh, being that close, 10 laps to, uh, to a scheduled pit stop, that they wouldn't take advantage of this yellow situation uh, to get that stop in. It certainly will split up the strategy within the team. The fifth yellow of the day is about to come to an end. 20 cars will answer the green flag of the 35 that started this race yesterday. And 35 because two were added in at the back of the field by the United States Auto Club and the IRL. There's Tony Stewart, he's second place. He's got two cars to separate him from the leader, his teammate, Robbie Buell. And we're green. There's the flag. Buell screams down into the first turn. Well, Paul, I'll tell you one thing. He certainly didn't wait. When he came off of four, he just stood on the gas and went for it. Yeah, that was a little bit faster restart than we've seen earlier in the race, but Buell, this is the first time he's led the cars to the green flag. Yeah, Buell did it the old-fashioned style, brought it up to speed. Here comes Stewart. He gets past the first of those intervening cars, and now he sets sight on catching up to the leader. That's just a puff of uh, the oil dry that was laid down in that car. Notice how high Tony Stewart was coming off that turn, Paul. Well, Tony Stewart now chasing on the main straightaway. Here comes Ward as well. Ward and Leyendike. That's the third place battle. Leyendike went way high coming out of turn one there, too. I think what happens is when they go by the wind that the other cars are stirring up, 
they lose their front end traction for a little bit. And they're running in with a, a number of other cars there who are not on the lead lap. So Jeff Ward making his moves. This rookie driving for Eddie Cheever in the first plus car is having a remarkable run. Jerry Punch, can you update us from the hospital? Well, Paul, Dr. Henry Bach has come out of the Hanover Med Medical Center here, and, uh, and Hank, uh, what's the update on some of the drivers? Uh, Billy Rose on his way out of Hannah. He's being released. He's uninjured. Paul Durant uh, going down to Methodist Trauma Center for further evaluation of some right hip pain. Uh, he was briefly unconscious uh, on the racetrack, but awake and alert when he left here. What about Robbie Gordon? We had some burns earlier in the day. Yeah, Robbie Gordon's got some first and second degree burns on his right wrist, his left wrist, and uh, on his right thigh. And he's going to be evaluated by his own doctors uh, tomorrow when he returns home. That's a story from back in Hannah, Paul. I'll tell you what, there's a great battle going on now between Marco Greco and Buddy Lazier. Greco, the red car on the inside, he just came around Lazier. And now Lazier is trying to come back at him. This is a battle for sixth place on board with Lazier as they come by Danny Sullivan. And on our way to lunch. Our third full not open until after three. Side of all things, Paul, and I really think Greco's down there trying to block it. Think we're going to try to go that way. Okay, now we're showing Greco as one lap down, so Buddy's just trying to get the, the position is correct. Greco is seventh, Lazier is sixth, but a one lap separates them. We got a first showed off on the computer scoring that way, and then it changed over to one lap down. So still, it is a position there that. Buddy Lazier occupies and appears that Greco is now two and a half miles back from that position. And Paul, the biggest problem is Buddy Lazier realizes where Marco Greco is running, and he is complaining back to the crew that Lazier is being held up by Marco Greco. The, the Lazier crew has talked to you, Zach Yeah, not anymore, Jack. He just got around him, but boy, he was angry as he did it. And he was hot on the radio. One thing about Buddy Lazier, he's intense in the cockpit. Yeah, and Greco is going to have to defend against Davey Hamilton now. This is a battle for position. Hamilton comes to the inside. Billy Boat out there as well, the lighter colored car. Look at the speeds there of the leaders. Leyendijk at 213, Buell at 210. That's when Buddy Lazier was angry, Tom. Well, yeah, he shook his fist at him. The real good news, here we got it coming down the front straightaway, but uh, the real good news for these drivers is that they're not in radio contact with each other because that would be getting get interesting. Yeah, they'd really be good. tough, wouldn't they, Tom? But, you know, you got to remember now, there are no turbochargers involved like the many years past that we've had. The only thing these guys have for passing to give them more power is downshift to a lower gear, which is about 10 hundredths lower, get a run of them like Buddy Lazier is doing right here in the 91 car. That's the only way they have to pass. So if a guy gets caught in a high gear, the other guy slips it out of gear, and lets them get a little head of steam up there. Well, you're right, Bobby. Uh, in fact, a lot of these cars have three top gears. We've seen many times in the past where they have actually two high gears, but uh, some of these teams are actually using three top gears that they can split them just a little bit apart to uh, give them an advantage. You wanted to see that on the, on the banner there for a moment. You were looking at the times on the last several laps of Ari Leyendijk. He is whittling away on Robbie Buell. There's the Valvoline speed truck for Leyendijk last time around. Well, the good point here is that he's not in any traffic. Some of these guys are stuck in traffic, and uh, with the turbulence and things, that's a big hindrance. And also keep in mind on the three gears that they have for racing, the 10,500 is where the rev limiters are set. Nobody wants to run them that high because they break there, but they do make more power and certainly go faster there. Robbie Buell running a lap at 209 miles an hour. There's Lion Dyke behind the leader again. Came from four seconds to two and a half. Buell at 209 miles an hour. Well, the uh, car of Stewart and the car of Lion Dyke were both up above 212 miles an hour. Lion Dyke nibbled off another full second, 1.6 behind. Lion Dyke is chasing and closing. The green car, the Quaker State Machine. That's Robbie Buell, the leader. Here comes Leyendike. Stewart just behind. Then Scott Goodyear. Then rookie Jeff Ward with a great run today. You'd have to think that Robbie Buell got a good adjustment during the last pit stop because he's certainly able to hold the lead and, and control his car through the turns a lot better. Five, two, 
Well, actually, I think Robbie's within a couple laps of making the stop right here. So uh, he's down on fuel, and it could upset the handling slightly as he's run the car real low on fuel right here. At Fuel's radio. They're going to bring him in. Same stagger at 110. Same stagger at 110. He's slowing down here in four, diving off into the pit. I'm coming on pit road. Coming on pit road. Speeds down, speeds down. Ari Leyendijk takes the lead, followed by Stewart. As leader Buell goes into the pits, you hear his radio. Gary Gerald, here he comes. We've got him in sight now. He's been so smooth all day today. That's one of the reasons that Team Menard put this young driver in the car. He doesn't show signs of getting rattled. He's not as brash or as impulsive, perhaps, as his teammate Tony Stewart. He's been rock solid, and he's got the opportunity. And a good stuff. 14.7 seconds. And they also put a little bit of front wing in it, gave him a little bit more bite on the front end. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes now. Robbie Buell led for 17 laps. The new leader, Ari Leyendijk, once again. And the scenario of the front row remains the same. Leyendijk chased by Tony Stewart, Jerry Punch. Well, Billy Rowe, we heard the good news that you're okay. Tell us what happened out there. Well, it was, uh, we were going down the back straightaway, and um, I got a run on Billy Boat, and I pulled up next to him on the uh, going down the back straightaway, and I didn't have quite enough of a run on him, so I just sort of had and let him go, and was going to pull in uh, behind him, and then I, my left rear, it looks like, or left side of the car touched Paul Durant, and then we just both went in the wall. Just a racing accident. Thank the good Lord we're okay. Well, Billy Rowe's first start at Indy is an eventful one, Paul. Now, too bad that he is out. We're keeping an eye, too, on Jeff Ward and Tony Stewart. Stewart second. Leader is Leyendijk. Leyendijk's last lap at 211. Stewart, Stewart just got affected back. a lot, Paul, by that uh, by running up on Dennis Patolo. He got caught. Tony Stewart, one and two, lost a lot of ground to Ari Leyendijk. Four tenths at the line, but he fell much further behind. Now he's worked around Vitolo. Danny, how much of an interval as they come across the north end? Well, he he was very close to him last time around, but uh, when he got held up by Dennis Vitolo in one and two, he lost a lot of ground, probably 100 yards or so. Yeah, that's what uh, what happens. If you don't time it just right, That the traffic can really affect you here. And uh, Tony ran up on him and ran up on him the wrong spot. Had to roll out of the throttle. And with these engines, uh, the, the RPM band where they make power is real narrow. So if you have to get out of the throttle, it takes a while to get back to speed. Three and a half seconds by number two turn for those two guys, Paul. Well. And what we're trying to do for you here is keep track of most of the radios in the race. And as we see a car come on the screen, then you try and switch over to that radio. But as you can tell, it's hectic out there. We try and keep from talking when they're actually on the two-way radio. Interval remains two and a half seconds between Leyendijk and Stewart at the front of the field. Scott Goodyear sits in third. Jeff Ward in fourth place, the highest place rookie. We'll return with more of Indy after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back in Indianapolis, the caution has just flashed on for the sixth time today. Dr. Jack Miller, that's the car sitting up high on the racetrack. And it looks to be Tom, that Mike Groff down below. I can't tell for sure. It looks like Mike Groff. So with those two cars, the yellow has come out. It is Mike Groff and uh, Jack Miller, so the field gets safely through, but the two of them got tangled together. Mike Groff's still in the car. Moving around, though, appears to be talking to the rescuers. Maybe he's thinking, I want to stay in this. I don't have any damage. I can't tell. That's Jack no. Miller up into the wall. I'm not sure what got him there. And here's Groff sliding down through the uh, pit apron area. Well, Mike Groff moves to avoid as Jack Miller grabs the wall. Yeah, Groff's Here, okay. It like he just lost it there, didn't he? Yeah, sure it looks like Jack just lost it. Looks like the back end jumped out. Uh, Groff's fun is uh, just hitting his brakes, seeing that there was a wreck out there. He had to slow down. Well, I got to tell you, you got to compliment Groff. He spun it to make sure he didn't get in it. But look at the car control that he exercised. Good drive. The Here, giant heating right. car. 
you can see Jack just loses by himself, and I think Groff is just trying to miss the situation, miss debris, and, and uh, slides it or spins it right underneath him. Tom, that's probably why he doesn't want to get out of the car. If he's only flat-spotted those tires, he wants to tow back in, put four new tires on it, let's go. Yeah, but Danny, he has climbed out and walks away. He's hoping that he can get back in that car. They're going to bring that car for Mike Groff, the uh, Jonathan Bird car, back into the pit area. And we want to make sure that both drivers are pronounced okay. He just wants to get back in. Jack Aroot. Well, let's tell you what the leader's thinking is right now. With this caution coming at this point, it's maybe, maybe, maybe 10 laps sooner than they wanted to. So, Fred Treadway, Skip Paul, and, the, and, and Ari Leyendijk's uh, brain trust here has decided that let's see what happens in terms of, in terms of, of, of cleanup out on the racetrack. They want to try and get two more stops and then complete the race. They need about five more laps to be able to accomplish that. So that's the conversation that's going on right now. Look for a pit stop late in this caution period for your leader. And you know who that really hurt was Robbie Buell. Remember, he had just made a green stop five laps earlier. We'll return with more of the Indy 500 after this message and a word from our ABC station. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 continues on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're back live at Indianapolis. Your ride with the race leader, Ari Lyon Dyke. The pace car is just ahead. They're on the warm-up lane because of all the debris up on the north end of the track. And uh, Lyon Dyke's coming in, it looks like, Paul. Yeah, it almost sounded like the engine cut off there. But a uh, good many cars are heading down the pit road. And Robbie Buell, of course, who just stopped, will stay out. Yeah, you can pass him. He's only doing 80. Come on in. Everyone's behind you. Stop him comes in. I'm going to cheat you out. And Jack, here he is. So Ari Leyendijk goes to work. The crew wanting to make just this, this their second to last pit stop. Gary Gerald, Tony Stewart goes to work up your end. Everything looking smooth. No changes. A little debris off the left front wing. Got him rolling. Twelve and a half seconds. That's as good a stop as I've seen today. Dyke beats Stewart to the line. Now remember, they're separated by about 50 yards. But it was quick work by Lion Dyke's crew so that it wasn't tight coming out of the pits. Let's also update you on Buddy Lazier. Lazier, as you've been noting all the way around the racetrack, has slowed down considerably. The conventional wisdom is that, or at least what Buddy thinks might have happened, is some debris might have been sucked into the, the air intake. They asked him during that last pit stop if he thought the engine would be able to last. He did not answer. Let's go to Jerry Punch. And Jack, they brought Mike Groff's car all the way to the upper end of pit road. It towed it in. In fact, it was in the air behind the wrecker. They've turned the car around, set it on the ground. Now Groff has climbed back in. They've changed, put four fresh tires. They're checking the wing, trying to check the car over for damage. And they're going to try to get him back on the racetrack. Remember, he is currently the Indy Racing League point leader. So he needs to get back in this one, if at all possible. Yeah, this may have cost him his IRL points lead. Show you how frustrating it can be, Tom Steva. We look back a few minutes ago. Yeah, here's Mike Groff right here, and he's out of the car. Uh, he's walking down the pit lane. Jack Miller's over here, and uh, Mike's a little upset. You see him throw the glove towards uh, the doctor over there. But some of that fr frustration, I think, is a little bit that USAC made him get out of the car. He wanted to stay in the car, get towed into the pits, but for whatever reason, Uzak asked him to get out of the car, and I think that was some of the frustration. All right, Scott Goodyear, who came into second place when uh, the leaders stopped, now comes into the pits, Jack. Coming down, found his marks very late, locks it up, misses the mark. They have to push him back. He had a visibility problem, could not find his crew on pit road. It was a very fast stop. Quick action, though. They lock it up. And now they're continuing to work, but they are very tight up against the wall. Crewmen that are changing the left sides are having problems. Come by road. Well, Jerry. Green play. Bye bye. Clayton Cunningham is the crew chief and co-owner for Mike Groff. Clayton, what did Mike say happened over there? 
Uh, Mike said that Jack Miller car number 40 spun in front of him and he had to lock up all four tires to avoid him. And unfortunately, he flat spotted and all four tires actually went flat, so he could not roll. Any other damage to the car at all? Uh, no damage to the car. That's good news for Mike Roth back on the racetrack. Yeah, well, that's better news than we thought we had on him. Robbie Buell, of course, it's cost him dearly. He's out in front of the group, but he is a lap behind the race. Jack? Well, we've got an injury in Scott Goodyear's pit. Adam Irwin, who changed the left front, left rear tire, had the tire run over his left ankle. He says he wants to finish this race, but he is limping around, Paul. Well, the other question, uh, Paul, let me jump in here on that Goodyear stop. You noticed I circled it on the telestrator a little bit earlier that he actually ran onto the, uh, the air hose. Now, whether that is a penalty or not, maybe we can get a word from uh, the guys down in the pits. But remember, Tom, he didn't actually be on top of it because they were able to pull the hose out without losing the car. So maybe that won't be a penalty. Usually, if they correct the problem, they don't go ahead and assess the penalty. Green comes out. Scott Goodyear actually the leader of the race. We look for him back in the group as they storm toward the fourth first turn. There's Jeff Ward. He now, as he crossed the line, Ward picked up the lead of the race. Lazier to second. Lion Dyke third. Stewart fourth. Goodyear back to fifth place. So a scoring correction as they hit the line. Jeff Ward, the rookie, leads the Indy 500. Tony Stewart moving inside Buddy Lazier. Well, moved inside about three or four cars right there. Tony got a great run off the corner and is able to get by three or four guys in traffic. And you can see just as he passes them, Tom, how wide he goes coming off to show you what the air does to the car. The other car is back in the field. Lazier was the one that mattered because Lazier was in second place. Here they come again, heading down for turn one. Ward, there's Stewart. Ward is the red, white, and blue car predominantly red just ahead there are a number of red white and blue cars in the race today on board here with tony again uh you know he's a, a sprint car driver he likes traffic and he's probably having a fun time out there right now and that moving to the right side to the inside that of course is jeff ward looking back at tony stewart now and that is steve chenzer well, there's two short track guys. Tony actually used his head there. He had a pretty good run on Steve, but he thought better of it. He rolled out. He wasn't sure Steve saw him, so he had to roll out of the throttle. And look what it did to the guys behind him. It gave him a big run on it. Tony went way to the left, clear down by the wall. That was to keep the other guys from being able to draft on him while he was going there. Yeah, the two Foyt cars were right there and hunting Hamilton and Boat. You heard Tony say he's too tight. That means he's got a push in the car. The car won't turn like he wants it to. They've been fighting that understeer. When he says he's too tight, uh, they're going to have to wait for the pit stop to be able to correct the situation. Now, that'll really hurt him right now, Tom, because, uh, of course, he's got a chance to do more adjustments, but that's going to keep him from trying to catch up on Ward. 10-4, 10-4. Don't forget, Dobby's probably not going to get a lot more pit stops unless we have some more yellows. We've only got one more quick one to go. That green car of Robbie Buell, who is a lap down, is really moving away from everybody. Of course, looking for a yellow to catch back up. Buddy lives here. Scott Goodyear right behind him. You're tracking Stewart behind the lead. Closed from 10 to 2 seconds. Well, Scotty got a run on him right at the end, uh, entering the third three and was able to make that pass on Buddy. Buddy probably has a lot less horsepower than some of them right now, so, and he can't turn much RPM because that would still hurt the engine. Lazier, Goodyear. There's Lion Dyke. Lion Dyke and Calkins. Oh, well, that looks that like it's going to be a tie right there, Paul. Oh, yeah. That's Scott Goodyear, I think, pulling up right on the back of, uh, of Lion Dyke at this point. Working the 147th lap, 146 complete. Oh, Dyke Tony here. Stewart still has some trouble to get by Steve Ginzer. He's still stuck in there behind him. Well, if he has got a car that's pushing into the corners, that's not helping anything. 
let's keep in mind now we're going to come to where we have 50 laps left pretty soon that's where a lot of the teams figure the race is the last 50 laps lion dyke falling further back now from the lead the leader of course is rookie jeff ward motocross champion is he on his way to being an indy 500 champion a rookie his first race nice guy from scotland leads the indianapolis 500 now the view down on the back straightaway 147 laps complete at indy First running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Valvoline Durablin, the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil. Old Milwaukee, America's best tasting beer. And Goodyear, number one in tires. Goodyear blimps have flown over the Indy 500 63 times since their first appearance back in 1926. Today it's Spirit up over the speedway. Jeff Ward, the rookie, leads the Indianapolis 500 by 4.2 seconds over Tony Stewart. And there he is, the first plus red, white, and blue car Valvoline race summary at this point in the race as we look back at the interval after 150 laps. Seven leaders, 12 different lead changes. Tony Stewart in pursuit of the leader. Pit stops help Jeff Ward. They really did. Uh, Jeff has been running right at the front of the pack, but on the last stop, he was the first one in. Now, when you're the first one in, you're the first one out a lot of times. He was first in, first out. He was at the head of the pack when it went green. But on the racetrack, he's been able to maintain that because he's running just as fast or faster than anybody else out there. 19 think, cars remain in the race, and Lion Dyke starting to roll in Tony Stewart. Go ahead. As uh, we watch here, Do Robbie Gill comes by, Paul. He's one mid. He looks like he's way ahead of the race. He's not really down a lap. He's just in the same lap, but way back now. He's very fast. If we get a yellow, he's going to be right up back around with the fast guys again. Well, Bobby, we haven't seen him in our coverage yet, but what Bobby's saying is that Buell did get back on the leader lap. He is ahead of the leader ward by uh, an eighth of a mile or so, and therefore is uh, that distance back, almost two and a half miles back from the leader. On board, Lion Dyke. Yeah, we're actually on board with Ari here. He's the fastest car in the racetrack right now, and uh, he's really closed the gap on Stewart. Lion Dyke's reeling him in, Jack. And Paul, he knows that he wants to get by Tony Stewart. In fact, just a couple of laps ago, he was in the gear. You know, they have that choice between fourth, fifth, and sixth in terms of running. He was in a gear that was putting the engine up on the rev limiter. The crew had to radio him to go to the other gear so they'd have a little more. The separation, about 200 RPM. They also radioed to him that he was the fastest car on the racetrack. Ari simply said, 10-4. All right, we've got a couple of great onboard cameras here in both cars. And we can watch this battle from a couple perspectives as Stewart and Lion Dyke battle for second at the Indy 500.
seconds ahead of that yellow car up there and leading the Indy 500 as a rookie. Jerry Punch. Well, back at the Hanna Medical Center, Dr. Jack Miller has walked out, and Jack, fortunately, you're okay. That's the good news. What happened to you out there? I'm not sure yet. Uh, you know, I, was, I was running fine. Actually, I wasn't even in, you know, no one was around me. I turned into three, and actually, I'd already started to turn in. All of a sudden, the car just snapped. Um, it felt like something broke, and I'm not sure what happened. I don't think it was the engine, either in the gearbox, the CB, or the tire. It just does uh, like somebody hit me from behind, but I know no one hit me, but here comes Lion Dyke. Lion Dyke comes forward. around Stewart and Lion Dyke picks up second place. Sorry to interrupt Jack Miller there, but Lion Dyke just made the move. We've been waiting All for right, several laps. Nice move, Al. Put some space in him. Now look at Scott Goodyear pulling up on Tony Stewart also. There's going to be another one here pretty quick, Paul. Yeah, Scott Goodyear is in the fight. And you heard him tell Lion Dyke on the radio, nice move there, and it certainly was. Ward, though, is losing ground. Ward, the leader, they're closing on him with this battle, and he's having to run through some traffic. Well, he's really been held up down here in turn four in traffic. He's losing some ground, but mainly due to traffic. Goodyear tries to move. But Stewart takes the inside line. Ward is just ahead, not directly ahead, but watch for Ward. He just turns into the corner as they come around Groff. That blue and the white car is, is Scott Goodyear. The blue and white one there, clear on the right of the screen. Just half a second behind the leader is this battle. Lion Dyke swings out, picks up the speed. Boy, that line that Stewart's running is fascinating. Thing that's happened in Lion Dyke was quicker on full tanks compared to the top guys early in the race. They've adjusted the car, and he's actually now on low tank, low fuel. He's actually uh, faster than the rest of the guys, so they've adjusted. Ward leads the 500, 159 laps complete. Back in Indianapolis, nothing has changed with the lead, but Robbie Buell has dropped out of sixth place and headed into the pits. Remember, he got back on to the lead lap, but now he will drop a lap behind the race as he comes in for the stop, Jack. Robbie Buell comes in. Now, remember, Buell had some understeer early in the race. He's been battling. Oh, man, in trouble. Tice Carlson. He replaced John Paul Jr. in the car after Jr. was injured in an accident. And the yellow comes out again at Indianapolis. Now, how will that play Tom Sneva into the whole pit stop scenario? Mule finishes out. He takes advantage. Pits are going to be closed for a minute. That's really going to hurt him, though. It goes green pretty quick. Another car in trouble here, too. Johnny Unser. Looks like the engines let go in that car. I wonder if those two are related in any way. Well, I don't think so. Uh, the good news is it doesn't look like Tice actually hit anything too hard. Uh, he obviously did a couple 360s, but uh, it doesn't look like there's much damage there. This looks like a motor problem. It's probably not related to that Tice situation. I was just wondering if maybe this, uh, this engine might have gone before we saw Tice. We'll take a look at it and find out what happens as Johnny Unser, another member of that great racing family, walks away from his car, the second 500. Tony Stewart's on board, Tom, here. Oh, boy, Tice just lost it as they said Stewart went roaring past him. Yeah, I don't know if he was getting out of it and letting Tony come by, but Tony's by by a long ways, and that's sort of an unusual place to, to spin in that yeah. situation, so... We'll have to get a different angle here and see uh, if we can tell what happens. Did he just he scare just, him? He just simply lost it right there. So, we're yellow again at Indianapolis, the seventh time of the day. Jeff Ward continues his lead, and the strategy begins to play in the last 100 miles. If you've been keeping track on America Online, the keyword, of course, is ABC Sports, then you may already know that uh, Jeff Ward, the leader, got in and out of the pits cleanly, uh, though there was a concern that he had passed the pace car. He, in fact, had, but then he got back into the appropriate position before they got to the start-finish line, so everything is okay. Don't forget, on June 8th, we'll take you to the Motor City for the Detroit Grand Prix, watching defending champion Michael Andretti race it out with others on the two-and-a-half-mile street circuit on Belle Isle then. And 
IROC fans, race fans, this is the IROC to watch. The one from Daytona, Sunday, June 8th. Boy, do not, do not miss that one. So Ari Leyendijk, under this, the seventh yellow of the day, picks up the lead of the race. It puts the entire field right in contact with him. Stewart second, Scott Goodyear third, and we expect stops by the leaders. Now our stories of the day, the rookies, 13 started, nine of them are now out, but Jeff Ward, fabulous rookie, has led 24 laps and is still in the fight. 18 cars are officially out with attrition between accidents and engines, and five cars remain on the lead lap. So we've updated you on everything now. We wait for the pace car to pass the pit entrance to see whether or not the leaders will head on into the pits. The pits are, in fact, open should they care to do so. Stewart comes rolling up, and there they go. Heading right down the pit road. Lion Dyke, Stewart, Goodyear. And they're telling him one lap to go. One lap to go. Oh, what a chance they're taking here. Fall off, though. Looks like they may have to stop again if they don't go green. Harry Lion Dyke is on his marks, Jerry Punch. What about Stewart? He's on his marks, Jack, and it's a gamble. They told him if Lion Dyke came down pit road, that Tony should follow him. They make a front wing adjustment. And he stalled it. And Stewart is stalled. Refire, Stewart. Now refires. Lion Dyke, by the way, decided to go with scuffed tires, guys. They talked about going with new ones. They decided to go with the scuff. Goodyear pulled away in second place. So now Lion Dyke, Goodyear, Stewart, when we come back, they'll be ready to go green once again. Back in Indianapolis, where green Jeff Ward picked up the lead of the race. There he is as he comes off of the corner. And second place is Buddy Lazier. There he is, that purple and yellow car. The battle for fourth place actually for third now is Goodyear the number six blue and white Nortel car and then Tony Stewart that yellow car and Ari Leyendijk it has been hot on that section of the course Jeff Ward's pit stop worked for him we're past now the 172nd lap and we're assuming that all of the cars can go to the finish without a pit stop that's what Jack Arood has been telling you Jerry Punch let's get the update well, we can update on your Buddy Lazier car. We are told by Ron Himmelgarn that the motor is starting to lay down on the car and it is getting worse and worse, and we're getting awfully good fuel mileage because we're having engine problems. And we are going to roll the dice and try to stay out. Now, on Tony Stewart's situation, Larry Curry told me they cannot make it. They will come up four laps short. They are praying for another yellow. They need about four or five laps of yellow to make it all the way here in the Tony Stewart pit. Let's check in with Gary Gerald. And for the leader, Jeff Ward, it's a similar story. Remember, he was the first in. He has the farthest to go on the 35 gallons of methanol. Ed Mathman said, no, we need eight laps of yellow. They got two or three on that one sequence. They need more. Otherwise, they'll have to come in. Jack? Well, Gary, that could play right into the hands of Treadway Racing. Ari Leyendike fading because the car is beginning to push. Finds himself now in the fifth position. But look who's running third. Scott Goodyear. In both cases, they say they do not need to come in for fuel again. Goodyear moves on Lazier. Gets past them. Goodyear goes into second place. Jeff Ward still the leader. Now Stewart sets sights on him. Well, I still think there's a good chance that even Goodyear's going to have to stop for fuel. They might be playing a little poker with the other guys because everybody listens to ABC. Yeah, and that's what it's all about at the Indy 500, taking a chance and getting the big payoff. The they first prize over a million bucks here. If they don't have some yellows, we're going to see some awful close, awful close up the end. Low a fuel, folks. Ari Leyendijk, you ride with him now onto the main stretch. Lazier, Stewart ahead. Appreciate getting blown off by Stewart, so he went to a little bit lower gear to try to close the gap back up. Lion Dyke works on Lazier, takes him easily. 
So Lazier's in trouble. Ward maintains the interval back to Goodyear. They head for the line. Lion Dyke, he's moving around. Davey Hamilton, not a factor in the race. Hamilton is eighth, a lap behind. The leader, of course, the 52 car, the first plus machine of Jeff Ward. He is a teammate to his car owner, Eddie Cheever, who Gary Gerald has been out of the race for some time. He sits here on the scoring table and watches anxiously. No radio communication. Do you feel like you're out of the loop or are you really in oh, tune? No. I am smart enough to know to let the people to run it who know what they're doing. Jeff is doing a tremendous job. He's getting stronger and stronger as the race leads on. They have outthought everybody in this race. The last two stops, they worked their way in the front, in the pit. And Jeff has driven tremendously right from the end. Everybody's thinking about him as Rookie of the Year. He's going to win this. How about the fuel situation? Do you think he can make it without yellow the rest of the way? We're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating Punch. answer. Jerry Punch. Well, here in the Buddy Lazier pit with Ron Hilmogar. And Buddy, uh, or Ron, Buddy is dropping back. Now, you told me the motor laying down a little bit. How bad is it? Well, we're running about three, four miles an hour slower. Than the other guys, we just can't keep up with him. He's working good in the corners, but uh, we're just down on power. But you won't be able to make it on fuel. Well, I'm not going to say that. Well, we'll just wait and see. Our mileage isn't coming up because this motor's laying down. So we're just out here for the ride, and hopefully uh, we can make it to the end. But uh, you know that Delta Fossil Energy and uh, Xerox car is doing all right, and thanks Montana, we're, we'll bring home. All right, Paul. Uh, Buddy Lazier's car continuing to get slower and slower, and he's losing spots on the racetrack. Yeah, around the last lap at 203 to the looter, le leaders, 207. Rookie Jeff Ward is the leader. When we come back, we'll take you to the finish of the Indianapolis 500. Back live at Indianapolis, Jeff Ward still the leader. He is pulling away from second place. It's now Tony Stewart. It appears that Scott Goodyear is having some problem. Ari Leyendijk's been battling with him as well. And here is that pass as Tony Stewart moved on the main stretch on the number six Mortel car of Scott Goodyear and got past the Ari Leyendijk. There he was, but he got caught up behind him. Well, Goodyear tried to block the lower lane, and uh, Stewart just went right around the outside. Now we're going to go commercial free to the end of this race. If there is no yellow, Jeff Ward still leading here. Now, at 180 laps in the past year, the guy leading at 180 certainly was not the winner of the race. We are on the 183rd lap of this run. Now, can they make it through to the end of the race? We'll start with Gary Terrell. And in the Jeff Ward first plus pits, I can tell you that the tension is mounting. They have gone conservative. They told him to go down two clicks on fuel. They told us they would need yellow to go to the distance. We've got 16 laps to go, running on time. Goodyear back around Tony Stewart. The battle continues behind Ward. Boy, a, a quick move there, too. Very quickly, suddenly, Goodyear was around Stewart, Jack. And Scott Goodyear has taken the whip to his car despite a severe understeer, meaning the car wants to go out to the wall with the nose. Ari Leyendijk's understeer that we told you about has gone away, but he's not having the same sort of running traffic. Those two drivers have been informed that the leader will have to stop for fuel. So they say they're racing with Tony Stewart. Let's check in on Buddy Lazier and Tony Stewart with Dr. Punch. Well, Jack Lazier continues to lose RPM. They're just hoping the engine will hold together for the final 15 laps. He's trying to hold on the fifth spot. Meanwhile, in Tony Stewart's pit, they have told him that they are definitely short on fuel. They have leaned the Stewart card out and told him you've got to conserve fuel. When they told him that, that's exactly when Goodyear went back by. Paul? You saw Ari Leyendijk is following, following back from the leader of the race, that pass that Scott Goodyear just made about two laps ago. And as we take a look at it, 
Paul, that was not anything to do with fuel. He had to go around the slower car around the outside of four, and Scott Goodyear got a run on him and just ran him down on the straight and passed him around one. Yeah, sure what it looks like here. Dennis Patolo, the intervening car. Here it is there. Now watch this. There's Goodyear, comes to the outside. That red car had held Tony Stewart up right there, Paul. Yeah, the pass comes on the straightaway, but where it really started was in the corner. Tony had to give him a little more room, had, was real cautious, wasn't sure, couldn't really anticipate what that guy might do, and gave him more room than he needed to. Yeah, careful play by Tony Stewart. You now ride with okay, Lyondike. Calm down now. We're all right. We've got 13 laps to go. Just remember, troops, I still predict they're all going to have to stop and get a little bit of fuel. That's really going to set the stage for a race. Well, I agree with you, Bobby. Uh, just moments ago, Ari was trying to get up on Tony Stewart. And look at this, drove him right down, wheeling the grass. He maintained control. Wow. Unbelievable. That was a bad one. That really could have been a bad wreck there. I'm amazed that he drove in the grass that long without getting the car sideways. He couldn't pull it back on quick, Tom. As you know, he just spun. Does that tell you something about the skill of Ari Leondike? Jeff Ward out in front of the field. Rookie leader. We're listening to Ari Leondike's radio now. Tony Stewart ahead. Ward is 11.8 seconds ahead of second. Yellow comes on, crash in four. Danny Sullivan called it. And it's Steve Kinzer. Steve Kinzer catches the wall coming off of four. And another car got up into it. He's right in front of you, Paul, down. He's up against the wall going into one. Couldn't tell who it was. Lynn St. James looks like that other car. Still riding the wall coming down through the first turn. That, that's not Lynn St. James. That, of course, is uh, Scott Kinzer there. Steve. Or Steve Kinzer. Thank you to Scott Goodyear. Steve appears to be just fine. Well, Steve's fine. You could see him slapping his hands on his helmet. Uh, he, he felt like he's made a mistake. He's upset about being out. The key here is what the leaders are going to do. I, th I think we're all going to see some pit stops right now. First in, first out, too, Tom. Remember that. That's going to be a decision pretty quick. Well, Steve Kinzer and Lynn St. James were running together. Here's the replay, Tom, on board Kinzer. Yep. The car's slow on the inside here. Steve, oh, actually might have just clipped wheels with him as he went around. Steve pulled down on him right there, Tom. Well, I don't know if he pulled down. I don't think he pulled down. He just didn't give him enough room going yeah. by on the outside. Well, look at that. If that didn't pull him down, I don't know what it is. Well, obviously, Steve is trying to cut it as close, not trying to get out of the groove any farther than he had to. So Lynn St. James gets the wall. She comes up against the wall as Kinzer loses it after appearing to brush with Buzz Calkins in the 12 car. So the yellow out, eighth of the day, and Jeff Ward's advantage has just gone away. We'll return with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The 81st running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Valvoline Duraplan, the number one selling semi-synthetic motor oil. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. AT&T, it's all within your reach. And Goodyear, number one in tires. Looking down on the giant two and a half miles of Indy from the Goodyear Blimp Spirit from Akron. It's the largest airship in the world, one of four that Goodyear owns. The latest launch last week in Guadalajara, Mexico. It'll cover a number of Mexican automobile races. Now, General Hospital will follow our coverage of the Indianapolis 500. Jeff Ward leads it. His lead, though, has evaporated with this yellow flag. He's followed by Scott Goodyear, Tony Stewart, Ari Leyendyke, and Buddy Lazier. Paul Tracy, Alan Sir Jr., and Michael Andretti battle it out in the Detroit Grand Prix. See why they call it the Motor City. June 8th on ABC Sports. 
192 laps complete while we were away. The die was cast for the leader, Jeff Ward. He's no longer the leader. He came in for a splash of fuel. It took 5.8 seconds. He's back up there. Now you wonder, will the leaders have enough to get to the end? Jack? Well, two guys that are leading, Scott Goodyear leading his teammate, Ari Leondike, they stayed out, inherited first and second. They don't intend to come in. Jerry? Well, Tony Stewart made a pit stop. They were trying to do some calculations here. Larry Curry now talking to the USAC official about the fact that his driver trying to get back up through the field, back to a proper starting position. They calculated they were going to be about two gallons short, two gallons of the lap and a half here in Indianapolis. They had to come in for a splash. Paul? What a gamble being taken now as Lion Dyke, his teammate, Scott Goodyear, they stay out. Eddie Cheever and Dick Karen, their team manager, brings in Jeff Ward's car. He was working on being the first rookie since Bram Hill in 66 when they had that first lap accident then. Now we are getting ready to go back to the green flag again. Already the pace car is off. 192nd lap complete. We're green. Here we go. The final laps at Indianapolis. They spread out in a battle for third. The Treadway team car well, we don't know the Scott Goodyear and Lion Dyke are going to have enough fuel. It's going to be awful close. Also, Bobby, do you think there's any team orders here? I'm sure that they are, but, uh, you know, racing is a gamble a lot of times. All the time. Scott Goodyear has been so close, but here comes Lion Dyke. Lion Dyke, they go into the corner side by side, and Lion Dyke takes the lead of the 500. You know they're both trying to save fuel, but it looks like Scott saved it. tried to save a little bit too much by going to a too high of a gear. Okay, now hang in there. Well, I don't, lap, lap. I don't know about the team orders oh, here with eight God. laps to go. I don't see there are going to be any team orders. Listening to Ari Leondike's radio. Leondike, Goodyear, Lazier Ward, that's the order. Seven seconds ahead of third. Just you two. Do you think they put team orders in there and tell them to slow down and conserve fuel so they have a one-two finish? Now, the team orders were obviously just don't come in and get fuel. Save all you can. This is it. We're going for it. Okay, we need to go back to zero on the fuel. We're looking good. Zero on the fuel. That should pick up the pace. Stewart, they brought the yellow out again. Well, this Five is, to go. This is going to be the difference in the race right here. Report is that there's a piece of debris, a, a mirror came off of one of the cars, and it's in the racing line, so they want to get it off of there. I'd say Lion Dye could play a lot of money for that mirror right now. <laughs> I'm going to check his car make sure it isn't his. They split that mirror laying out in the middle of the track. Boy, this is really a lucky thing. Just down from you, isn't it, Bobby? Yes, it is. It's really, really, really a lucky thing for Lion Dyke. It's good here because I think they were close. All they're going to do is get that off. Picked it up, and away they go here. And, yeah, it can go right back. The, the emergency station is right there. There's a break in the wall. Good thing they saw that. That would have really cut a tire, Paul. Hey, guys, let me update you on Scott Goodyear. He's been radioed back and forth to his crew. He was explaining what gear he was in. When that pass was made, and as you look at, Bob Le at Buddy Lazier, it looks like the mirror came off of his car as we ride on board of him. Yeah, his Get right mirror is gone, Jack. Getting back to the Goodyear story. There you see where the mirror is missing. Goodyear actually was in the fourth gear as we get ready to go back to green. Goodyear thought he was back in fourth gear. All right. We're ready to go green once again. Ari Leyendijk just passed his teammate at Treadway Racing, Scott Goodyear. They are leading the 500. Rookie Jeff Ward sits in third, but he has to deal with Tony Stewart, who has a very powerful machine. And Buddy Lazier, the defending champion, sits in fifth place. They'll come back with just four to go. And the way I see it, that's about a two and a half million dollar mirror for the Treadway team at this point. Don't forget that Scott Goodyear has twice been involved in controversy at the finish. One, the closest finish, not so much a controversy. And then once when he passed the pace car and the win went to Jacques Villeneuve because of that. He 
race comes up. Here we go. Closing laps. They're running for the checkered flag. They're running for the checkered flag. Three to go. A lot of these are dictated by restarts, but here it doesn't look like anybody got a big jump. Goodyear wasn't able to get a four, big jump four, on, four, on, four, on four, four, uh, what the yellow is for though I well lion dyke also looked like he almost grazed the wall so uh um... well, we'll go back take a look at it of course when a car touches the wall that's when you're going to go yellow here again on board stewart you can see him oh boy good, good that, brush. that was a certified hit yeah that's uh that's a pretty good hit obviously under steering he's pressing too hard to try to close the gap and made a little mistake that Did shows you how much the front wings do because you get a little disturbed air from the other cars there and kept standing on the gas and ran out of racetrack. So Ari Leyendijk will come around and he has a yellow out at the start finish line. Leyendijk, there he is. You're on board him. The white flag is there and they're going to go green for the final lap. Here we go. One more lap. Two and a half miles in the Indy 500 will be decided. Get going, buddy, get going! That's yellow out there. It's green again. What the fuck are they doing? Apparently, the yellow light is still on on some section of the racetrack. It's green here in the back straightaway, Paul. That's what they situation startled you and a lot of people well good thing I was running in I don't remember what gear but I just went down one gear and it picked up real nice and then the light went back yellow but I just kept going I said the hell if they don't know what they're doing I better just keep doing what I've been doing so I just want to thank Treadway Mr. Treadway Fred I haven't seen him yet for a great team my engineer Tim Wardworth Skip Fall the guys this is a special victory for this team as well because you were some of the first supporters of the Indy Racing League and last year you set 235 mile an hour plus laps not good enough for the pole then you go out and you think you were going to win and that wasn't good enough because of Eliseo Salazar but you're here now I'm here now and that was count uh, Fred Treadway put a great effort in I mean we have the best team we got the best guys on the crew and uh, you couldn't ask for more as a race car driver any better than last year than 1990 yeah, it's been a long time ago. This is a lot better. Thank you. Let's go back to the tower. All right, here's exactly what they were talking about. There is the light. See it down in the corner. They're coming to the start-finish line for the restart. The race has started. Now look up at the top of the screen for the flagman. He's already waving, but the, the light is yellow. That's the controversy. That's the confusion. And unfortunately, Scott Goodyear is caught in it again. Scott, Gary? you're talking to an assembly of media folks down here. 
Scott, they, they really worked hard and uh, they really made the car come back. We were really fighting at the beginning. We went backwards at the beginning. So um, we fought all day long. We did a lot of good stops. Engineering and that sort of thing um, was really good. We were strong. We just had a little bit too much. Scott, for this national audience, can you tell us now about this controversy on the restart? What you saw? Were you aware you were going green with a lap to go? Absolutely not. I thought we were going to finish underneath that. We didn't have any indication at all. I had no indication on the radio. And uh, unfortunately, we came down, and then uh, my guy yelled to me, green, green, green. And uh, we weren't even, we were still in yellow fuel. We didn't have the acceleration. And that is the key lap of the whole race, obviously, because uh, you want to get a draft. You want to get the guy going into the next turn and lead coming down the straight. So Did you think you had any chance of getting him had you known it was going green? Well, I probably would have been on the gas a lot sooner than what I was. And, um, you know, I don't think he really even expected it. And uh, the end result, obviously, is I'm not sure if we would have or not, but we had a lot, a lot of drag in the car to run all day to get through the traffic. But, uh, you know, overall, a one-two finish for Treadway and Northern Telecom. So, I mean, that's a bonus. But... Uh, Scott Goodyear for the second time in recent years in major controversy at the finish, Paul. Celebration in victory lane, the Valvoline race summary. There it is, Ari Leyendijk unofficially the winner of the Indy 500 at an average speed 145 miles an hour. Seven liters, 16 changes in what was a great race. The final standings, they are unofficial until later in the day, but it's Leyendijk, Goodyear, you look down the order. Controversy at the front once again. Jeff Ward, the rookie, with a fabulous, fabulous run. So the Indianapolis 500 81st version is now complete. I'm Paul Page. So long from Indianapolis. General Hospital is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, home of the Triple Crown. You're watching ABC.